Hello everyone, this is HGS Gusky here, back with some more Bronze League Heroes! This time it is going to be a game between our player Pika Chizui up at the top left side, I, or bottom left side, excuse me, I think he meant Pikachu, but it's with an X, so it's Pika Tsu. Pika, I don't know actually how to pronounce that correctly, we'll just go with Pikachu. And up on the top right side, it is going to be Jinak Yizzy. With some weird little symbols going on there. I didn't even know you could actually use these type of symbols in your StarCraft name. So I guess we're learning something new every day. What the hell is this player's name? I have no idea. Maybe I'll just be calling him Yizzy from here on out. It is going to be a PVT. And the map, a very, very fun Bronze League Heroes map. That was the map that we saw the lift off over here as the Terran player attempted to win the game from the center of the map. Which is not recommended, by the way. Highly do not recommend that. The probe has already scouted. He does have a mouthful of minerals. And we are going to be seeing what looks like a standard opener over here from Yizzy and his Protoss opponent. Look at that. Making probes. That's all I've got. Because he hasn't done anything that's a complete disaster just yet. Now, I will say walling in versus Terran is not recommended. That is right. Not recommended. The reason walling in versus Terran is not recommended is because you have to remember that Marine Marauder are very good versus Gateway units. What that means is, is that if you have too many buildings kind of blocking right here, you do not get a defender's advantage, because what you need is a big concave. So if there's ever any kind of rush here, you want to have the concave. Just remember that versus Terran, you got to have that concave, and uh, if you're worried about losing to an early timed rush, then you also need the force fields. And at the same time, you force field on the ramp, you get your concave, pew, 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 lasers, and you're able to defend. So actually, walling in like this versus Terran is a liability. And he needs to keep making probes there. There he goes. Does continue to finally make those probes. We also have this proxy pylon set up a little bit early. But uh, we'll be okay with that if he actually ends up using it at some point. I love how they have the little decals on the side. And walling in here versus Protoss is okay. I would say as Terran, though, it's a very similar liability to where you want the Defender's Concave. That is officially what I'm calling it. The Defender's Concave is what you want to try and have as both races in this matchup. And down drops the Mules. The Orbital does finish right away. It is going to be a Marine building first. He does have gas. So we'll have to see what Yizzy is going to be using for uh, this gas for. Another barracks is going to be coming up. Uh, kind of interesting choice because he's had gas for so long. But either way, Probe over here is still going to be checking it out. We have the Cybernex Core going to be coming up. And we have the second gas over here. Should probably go ahead and put some probes in that gas. Uh, this gas, it looks so lonely all by himself with no probes mining inside. Well, this gas over here, look at this, this probe, you ever notice that a mining geyser has little cubes that appear, and one that is not mining doesn't, although now, now it does because it has probes mining there, but fun fact of the day is what I just said. Now, we do have the expansion going to be coming out for Yizzy, so he is actually going to be going for a macro build here. And, uh, again, keeping his probes, or excuse me, SCVs on that gas, is it going to be for stem? Maybe for some early Marauders, maybe for Shells. Either way, what is this probe doing over here? By the way, there's no reason to leave a probe out in the center of the map doing nothing really at any point of the game. Actually having this guy back a lot earlier to help him mine, especially considering that he has stopped at 11 probes on the main minerals. Now, they do put this number here for a reason. This, uh, this 24, that means you want to try and get 24 workers on the minerals. Now, I know if you're some super sick Gosu player, you want to have 16 on each base and make sure you rally them perfectly and all that. If you're in Bronze League, you want to have 24 probes there. So you want to get that as quickly as you possibly can in most situations. That is the best way to improve quickly. We do have another gateway on the way. And the Twilight Council got to be coming up. My guess is DTs because Bronze League Hero DTs are actually just way better than the average DT. While the, uh, the Bronze League Hero Zealots have about 40% HP compared to a regular Zealot, the, uh, the Hero DTs from Bronze League Heroes, they do triple damage. That is, just, that is just how it is. Now, we do have the Twilight Council about halfway done. We'll see what he decides to do with that. My God, Probe, you are a slacker. He's not even moving. He's just sitting there staring at the wall. He's in the dunce corner. You're officially in the dunce corner. Now, we do have Stimpak on the way here for Yizzy. Got to give him a round of applause for actually researching Stimpak. It's very good. Hopefully for him, he doesn't spam the stem. That would be that would be kind of a Debbie Downer for that army. Remember, Terran players, if you have a big ball of units and you have stem pack, do not hit the hotkey to use stem pack more than once because they will listen and they're like, all right, double up on drugs, triple up on drugs, quadruple, and I'm dead. They will do that. I remember one time when I was playing with Kurt Hugo Schneider. He did that the first time he ever played the game. It made me giggle way more than it should have, and I still give him a hard time about it. There's going to be the third gateway now. 
Dark Shrine is on the way, and a Robotics Facility, so we are going the classic Protoss Bronze League Hero 1 base, where it is going to be four gates, Dark Templar, and a Robotics Facility. Bronze League Heroes players, man, they, they just save up their money, and they invest it all at once, which is what we're seeing. It's going to be a Warp Prism, so he is definitely going to be relying on that DT drop. Not that I can blame him, because again, DTs and Bronze League Heroes are actually phenomenal. Our Protoss player, though, does only have 30 supply, and uh, our Terran player, Yizzy, I still can't believe this name. This name has to mean something. There has to be something going on with this name. Is that Starport? Yes, it is. It's also going to be a reactor coming on up, so we could go for the double medevac production. I got to say, if you're a bronze level Terran, just getting out lots of barracks and a couple of medevacs is like the easiest way to march your way to victory, which is exactly what Yizzy's going to be doing right now, just working on that Marine Marauder. Remember, Marine Marauder is quite a robust unit composition, although he definitely needs more than two barracks. If you're on two bases, it, the rule is not one barracks per base. The rule is a lot more than that. That's why he's going to be hovering here a lot of money. Yes, he'll be able to start making medevacs, but it's still not going to be enough to cut into that uh, income right now. He is consistently making workers, which is quite good. He's at 20 in the main base, about 8 or 9 at the natural. And we do see, Badoom! 24 probes. He actually listened. We're all so proud of him. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This is quite the proxy. He's got the proxy assimilators over here. Unfortunately, those don't actually attack anything. Maybe he'll throw down a Nexus in a moment. We'll just have to wait and see. The War Prism, though, is going to be moving forward here. And we'll see. We'll see if he's actually able to warp in a bunch of units or not. He's going to go right for the main base. Decides to completely ignore the natural. And uh, we do have double uh, the engineering base going down. Is he going to be able to get the missile turrets, though? That's going to be the real question right now. War Prism has arrived. Does Yizzy realize what's going on? Of course he doesn't. Because Yizzy... Oh, my God! The pro made all of this and then left. The probe made that entire base, except for the base itself, and then left. But here comes the DT drop. The warp end of the four DT is going to be slicing through these workers. He actually reacts a lot faster than I'm used to seeing in Bronze League Heroes. He does need to throw down a missile turret, though, immediately. Looks like the engineering base is going to get taken out. He will get a lot of money back for these upgrades. He needs to build a missile turret. Missile turret! Missile turret! Uh, which guy is being told to build this? Because he sure as hell is not. All right, he's going to go ahead and move up there. Can he still build it? Oh, you can't do it. All right, I just learned something. If you queue something up and then lose the tech to build it before it is actually starting being built, the SCB immediately forgets how to do it. Oh, God, he actually got the command center. Spoiler alert, they can lift off as the DTs right now are going to be going to town on the main base. I'm telling you, man, DTs and Bronze League are, are the way to go. They are the way to a brighter future for America. And uh, you can see these ones are so powerful. They're getting high off of this Vespine gas over there, deciding not to actually do anything. There's the scan. Why with the bad scans every time? There we go. The army does move in and will take out three of them. Can he get the fourth one as well? Yes, he does. The other four DTs do remain, though, and there is no Raven on the field. It's going to make this quite an awkward situation for Yizzy to deal with, although Yizzy does still have... A, a somehow a supply advantage going on in this game. He's going to go ahead and start mining down here. He has 31 SCBs remaining down there. He does actually manage to get another engineering bay and another missile turret up. Oh my god, it's so many DTs. At what point do you stop making DTs? That is that is the question of the hour. And also, at what point do you lift off your buildings? That is, that is one for the philosophers there. But uh, we will see if these DTs just continue to do this. Once again, the missile turrets do not happen. He is finally dropping one down at his base. But unfortunately for him, he, he where are his units? Didn't he have units just a moment ago? Did I, did I miss all those units dying, or have I just not been paying that much attention? I guess they ended up dying trying to defend the main base. He should probably lift off these buildings. That is something they are able to do, and not, not going to happen. So that main base has been completely cleared out. Here comes another clutch missile turret here. Uh, about 20 minutes too late, but that's going to be fine. I think he'll have enough here to clean up these DTs, but my god, that is a lot of DTs. Oh my god, save the missile turret. That's going to be the key right now. And down goes the missile turret. Uh-oh, what do we got going on up here? No, this is where all the units went. He actually went for a drop inside the main base. All of a sudden, this is going to be turning into some sort of wonky base race. I actually thought it was just going to be a DT slaughter. And the DT is right now going completely unchecked. He can't produce any units because he has no unit producing structures other than the one factory over here. But the drop inside the main base doing ridiculous damage. Got to be taking out the Marines, uh, or not the Marines, but the Zealots with the Marines. I think at this point, he is going to start going for some pylons. I love the one base play with six gate or five gateways, excuse me with another Dark Shrine on the way. 
win behind Dark Shrine. Win in a base race, make a second Dark Shrine. So he's going to be having that on the way. And it does look like all these gateways will be underpowered here in just a moment. And that is going to be that as far as warping and reinforcements. And the main base is going to get taken out. Does he manage to save any probes? He had that one probe out in the center of the map for the entire game. But now he's down to six probes. That is these probes right here. At least I think so. Yep, there's the other one right there. So if these six probes die, he's not going to be able to build a nexus. He needs to try and get out of his base right now. He is going to attempt to do just that. Here goes those four probes. He will be able to keep those alive. Does he decide to cancel the Dark Shrine? Uh, probes, probes, what are you doing? you got to get out of there, probes. You have to leave the base right now. This is a danger zone. This is like that scene in Terminator when all the Terminators are fighting the humans, only the humans aren't human. They're probes. So it's nothing like that scene at all, but basically the moral of the story is run away from Terminators, and uh, that is not happening right now. Oh my god, if he loses these probes, uh-oh, uh-oh, he may be past the point of no return on these probes. Does he actually get them out? It looks like the Dark Temple are going to be moving out to try and kill off the remainder of these buildings. Our Terran player has all but given up building. Oh, he lost the probes, now he can't build anything. Why does this always happen? Why does this always happen? Looking at the units tab right now, no probes. No Nexus. That is going to be it for our Protoss player. Unless he can kill everything off with his DTs, he's going to be moving in right now. And it looks like he will be able to kill off this command center. And will he even cancel it? Yes, he does. He loses the SCV, though. He has the command center down here, but he's completely supply blocked. And I think he doesn't have any SCVs either. Oh, my God. Zero probes to zero SCVs. How often in a game do I get to say that? Not very often. So the economy is currently zero across the board. No harvesters. No Vespine gas income. Nothing. It looks like the drop going to be moving out here at the top left side. It is going to find the weirdest expansion ever seen in the history of StarCraft, which is an expansion without the actual Nexus here. So there's the big stem to try and take everything out. Thankfully, this is going to be a one-sided battle. It does look like the DTs could move out, though. The command center cannot be upgraded into an orbital command. Oh, God. I I don't know. I don't know if uh, if our Protoss player can actually do this. He does have his DTs going to be moving around. He should probably go ahead and make an Archon, though, so we can help deal with these medevacs. Taking a look at the units tab, it is five Archons. That is going to be two, uh, excuse me, five DTs. That's going to be two Archons. Plus, he has the War Prism, so we can micro them with that. Use the DT to lock down these bases. And I actually don't know if an Archon can win or not. I really am actually not sure here. We'll just have to wait and see if he actually manages to kill off these flying buildings. Here's the big stim once again. And I feel like stimming may not be the most necessary thing. Uh-oh, the command sword's got to be under attack here. Probably wants to lift that off. So later he can actually begin making workers. And does he lift it off? Yes, he does. All right, he has saved that command center for now. I feel like DTs may be the only option right now. But, uh, or excuse me, the Archons turned into... Uh, from the DTs. God, why is talking so hard? It does look like the DTs going to be arriving up here. We are going to be having an army versus building race right now. The DTs here finally reaching the Marines and Marauders will be able to take out some of these units. Goodbye Marines. Uh, the combat shield is able to make them survive one hit though. And he kills off only a single Marauder there. And at what point do you just try and avoid the DTs? I don't know. Ever feel like someone's watching you? Because these medevacs sure as hell do. And indeed, they would be correct. There's the DTs going to be moving out right now. This command are going to continue to move. What kind of mini-map are we looking at? I feel like Bronze League Heroes always has the most ridiculous games. But it does look like the drop's going to be moving out. The DTs down here, two of them still stalking this medevac. I feel like having Archons out would be quite useful, actually able to shoot down these areas. Because on this map, I don't know if there's enough room to float those buildings to the corners, because there's like no dead space anywhere down here. Maybe down here, but even then, an Archon might be able to reach from right there. I'm actually not sure. I don't think you can put Archons there, though. And I think Archons would be the only way to go at this point. Although you got to remember, you may be saying, well, you could just float his buildings away. Keep in mind that our Terran player has not lifted his buildings uh, really at the at the opportune times whatsoever. So we do see another simulator going to be going down right now. The DT's trying to move around. What is the APM at? That's what I really want to know. Oh, God, it's so low right now. In the 20s here for Pika Kazooie. Pika Kazooie, that's what we're going to be calling him right now. The DT is going to be chasing around these medevacs. Oh, that's a bad place to unload, especially since they've stand. They're trying to get back inside quickly enough. But unfortunately, a lot of those units were dying while they were unloading, trying to hop back into that medevac as quickly as possible. But right now, take a look at the units tab. Five DTs, five Marines, two Marauders. 
taking a look at production, shows nothing. Structures, it is a cybernetics core versus a command center and a factory. We also have the war prism here, which could follow around these buildings at least. It looked like the DTs are on the move. Are they going to be able to spot that medevac? They do see it here, but... Is this actually going to be a draw right now? I really don't know quite what to expect whatsoever. He might actually uh, unload on the low ground. That would be... No, don't unload right there. Woo! Thought for sure he's going to sacrifice his units. Unloading on the low ground, loading up, going on the high ground, and switch back and forth is really all it's going to take. He decides right now, though, that's not even worth it. Ah, there you go. Unload right now. Boom, boom, boom. Start doing some damage right now. And then you got to pick up these units and get the hell out of there. But the DTs have arrived. Oh, he saves it. Oh, almost loses the Marine right there. He's got to be so careful with these Marines. He's got to be so careful with these units. The War Prism right there does get pushed back. Uh, what is the Army Supply? Army Supply 13 to 12. Still just a Cybernetic score at this point. And uh, does anything actually happen after this? Or do they run around trying to kill each other for an hour and a half? That's going to be the real question right now. As it does look like the uh, medevacs over here are in position to begin attacking. Look at that. War Prism decides to go into warp mode for no, no reason whatsoever. Does kill that off. The War Prism didn't really serve any purpose, though. The medevacs over here, good to go. This, oh, he's trying to build an SCB, but he needs to lose a couple more units. Actually killing up. Oh, oh, what's this? What is going on here? It looks like uh, Red is saying GG. Is that going to be it? Because I feel like you could just make Archons and kill off both these medevacs. Make the Archons. Build the Archons. Oh, God, he's going to kill the factory as well. That leaves only the command center. If you make the Archons, you can actually win. Just make the Archons. Kill the command center. Krabby DT, War Prism from TL. Ah, all right. So we do see right now, make the Archons. This has got to be the hard rock song of this game. I have 2k mins at a base, but can't build units because of supply block. Pikachu saying, I lose. Well, if you would make Archons, press the C button, you would stand a chance. There's no way he's going to kill it with three units that he has remaining. And you could kill off these flying buildings. I'm just saying, oh god, a DT moving out. No, he doesn't spot it. The base is actually building. He has a supply depot on the way. Now he's got a barracks. He's got to be making the comeback of the century. Ah, there's only two units still left over here. Two Marauders and a Marine. If he makes an Archon, oh god. Oh god, the DT gets up here. If it was an Archon, you could attack that building while it was flying away. Just saying. Just saying. We'll see if he actually manages to land over here. He is no longer supply blocked. Oh my god, this is like... Cue the Benny Hill theme right now. Oh, hey, let's go ahead and upgrade it to an orbital right there. Oh, the DT has found it, though. Does he get it into the red? It's in the red. It is in the red. If he can't land it, he's going to lose it. He might lose. He might lose the orbital command. Can he drop a mule? Can he actually save this right now? Oh, God, this is so much better at times speed. There's a mule. Oh, oh, but he's going to lose the command center, and he loses the command center. And he's saying, well, now it's going to be a draw. If you would make an Archon, it wouldn't be a draw. Make an Archon, it's in the middle of the map. What are you doing, DTs? Make an Archon. Oh, God, he does have the patrol there. Two Marauders left and a Barracks. I think he ended up losing that Marine. And indeed he did. The Barracks over here. You can make Archons. They're right under the Barracks. Oh, my God. So is he actually microing that, or is that on patrol? It is on patrol right now, and uh, they are saying that this should be a Bronze League Heroes. I, I kind of agree. If only you would make an Archon! Ah, it's one of those times where I've learned how to speak English, and oh my god. Alright, look, the doing this is very funny, but it doesn't change the fact that you should make an Archon. Oh my god, this is actually going to be a draw, I think. I, I, I like, literally think this is going to be a draw. Uh, wait, wait, I think he's attacking his own, his own building there to deny the draw, which I think is a good choice here. You can make Archons, buddy! Oh, God! I don't, I don't, did someone lose? I don't know who left, because it doesn't say that they were victorious. I'm pretty sure that that was a draw in Bronze League Heroes. Whether you win or lose, you still lose. Here we cast the very best of the very worst, and apparently we have our very first draw. Something. It's like that game that was really popular and then it got bought for like a billion dollars and then it tanked. You guys remember that? Bad investment. All right. Well, apparently he refused to make Archons here, even though one Archon right here would have killed off these medevacs. One Archon down here probably would have killed off the barracks, but I guess hindsight is 2020. Big thanks to my friends Invicta for, uh, for sorting through all the replays. His link is down below. Uh, he's an awesome guy. He live streams the process quite a bit. If you want to send in replays, send them to huskyreplays at gmail.com. 
again here at Bronze League Heroes. The games may be bad, the players may be bad, but man, it is so good. All right, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Hello everyone, this is HGS Guest here back with some more Bronze League Heroes. That is right, it is going to be between Dr. Trevor up in the top left side. MVP Peace says, hey Doc, or it's MVP Peace, not MVP Peace. That is absolutely incorrect. Anyways, he does say, hey Doc. And uh, GLHF says MVP Peace down in the bottom right side. So it is going to be a PVT. I, uh, I just bought a new office chair, and I don't think I quite tightened the bolts on it very correctly. This thing is super wobbly, so hopefully it does not fall apart mid-cast. I do not want to hurt myself. I would be the very first person in the history of people to hurt myself during a, uh, a gaming commentary when all I'm supposed to be doing is sitting here. So, actually, I wonder if anyone has ever hurt themselves during a commentary during a live event or a recorded event. Now, uh, I do want to say something really quickly. Blizzard very recently changed how health bars work if you set it to the quote-unquote damaged health setting, which is actually my favorite one. Uh, Blizzard, if you're listening, I just want to say having it show the amount of workers loaded inside of a command center at all times is probably a waste. I would just recommend getting rid of that. I do like the other changes they made, though, to it where it will show energy bars uh, before, it used to not show the energy bar by itself, so that's actually really, really useful and awesome. So thank you for that change. I don't think we need to see how many SCBs are loaded inside the commencer. I will say, though, in Bronze League Heroes, we do see uh, some crazy shenanigans like that quite a lot. Anyway, so those of you who do not know, Bronze League Heroes is where we cast the very best of the very worst. The games are bad, the players are bad, but my god, it is so good. Uh, right now, we have something fanciful coming up. We have a second barracks on the way right now for MVPs. Uh, this is kind of an older school style of playing it out. What you can do here, uh, he should have started his gas by now if he's going to go the, uh, the old school style. But anyways, what you can do is get a reactor, get a tech lab as quickly as you can. You can actually do some pretty sick timings with two barracks. Uh, if your macro is spot on, you don't get supply blocked or anything like that. But if your opponent has a sentry or doesn't early expand, it can be very difficult to actually pull that off. Dr. Trevor, though, has <laughs> he's got one probe on gas. All right, man. He's about as good as I am at putting probes on there. There he goes. Does put the uh, remainder three on there. And does he throw down that cybernetics core? Yes, he does. He has workers on the way. The reason he has a little bit of extra money in the bank is because he is not chrono boosting. That is uh, something that's very useful right now is chrono boosting. Oh, he's got the proxy pylon already set up. The Marine is going to spot this immediately. I always love proxy pylons as the cybernetics core is going down. The pylon's like, don't worry. Don't worry, guys. I'm going to warp in sometime. Is he going to let this finish? And he lets the pylon, which has already been scouted, finish. This is when you know you're off to a great start. So this has been spotted there by our Terran player, MVP. And I have a feeling that he is not a very peaceful player. I have a feeling he's going to be very aggressive here. He still has no gas. He's finally going to be dropping that down. Uh, this build that he's doing actually makes no sense whatsoever. The pylon is going to get taken out. But uh, pro tip of the day, do not get three barracks without gas. If you're going to go for three barracks, that basically means that you're going to be aggressive, which means you want your gas going down as the first barracks is happening because you got to get stim pack, you got to get combat shields. Uh, sometimes you even get marauders slow, and you, of course, have to get the marauders themselves, so you need a little bit of gas for that. If you're going to go for an expansion, oh my gosh, this has been spotted already. These are the worst proxy pylons I've ever seen, both of them in plain view of MVPs. Maybe Dr. Trevor's like, hey, I come in peace, man. Your name was peace. You had the white flag raised. I come in peace. Don't think MVPs is going to be falling for that. However, Warp Gate's actually halfway done. Uh, he's only got two gateways, though, so either wants to add another gateway or an expansion because Dr. Trevor, he is hovering lots of money. He's got 700. Now he's got 800 resources almost. Actually, he did manage to burn into that by queuing up four probes at a time, so definitely not going to be uh, probe blocked anytime soon. Uh, we do have the reactor on the way. Tech Lab going to be coming on up. MVP definitely needs to start making some more SCBs here. I do like the idea of going for the three racks. It's a really solid build uh, for new players to learn. Oh, my God. This, if this proxy pylon actually comes into play, that is some awesome Bronze League Heroes action. Uh, he is going to be adding on two more gateways. Actually, not bad. The amount of gateways he has versus the amount of bases he's working on is not too many. <laughs> <laughs> he upgrades one of them. <laughs> All right, he makes one of them into a warp gate. So we got one warp gate and one regular gateway, 
We'll, uh, we'll see what the purpose of that one warp gate is going to be. I would highly recommend actually getting some units, though. He is cr he's going to build where it's no units at all. He's got the uh, the warp gates now. And does he upgrade this one to warp gate? Yes, he does. And he gets the fourth one as well. Round of applause for Dr. Trevor, who is now supply block because he lost the pylon down here. I wonder how MVP piece, MVP spotted that. It's so hard to make pointed jokes when I can't even say their names corrected. MVP's piece. No, MVP piece. MVP's. There we go. So much easier to say now that I've said it like 85 times. So we do have this army going to be moving out for right now for MVP's. Does not have stim pack uh, done yet. It is on the way. No combat shields. Even though he does have a second tech lab here, I would highly recommend going for the combat shield. Just saying. Hey, we have some units for Dr. Trevor. Three cheers for Dr. Trevor. One, two, three. Hey, one, two, three. Hey, one, two, three. I'm not going to do a third cheer. You thought I was. Uh, you guys got behind it as well. Now, we do have Twilight Council going to be going down. Very nice. Is it going to be for Blink? Is it going to be for Charge? Or is it going to be for the extremely overpowered and yet hardly ever seen Bronze League Hero DTs? Remember that Bronze League Hero Zealots are the most stupid units in all of StarCraft. My life for ire. Although so far we haven't actually seen any Zealots right now for Dr. Trevor. So I don't know if that's uh, something he has planned here or what exactly he's going to be doing with this. He is finally chrono boosting out some of his workers. Now I like that he stopped at 24 workers here. Um, if you want to be a little bit skeet skeet like a water hose, uh, that, that was not what I meant to say. If you want to be pro... Uh, like a pro player, you'll have 16 here and 16 here, and then you'll do uh, the rally point individually to each base uh, based on the nexus that is currently there. He is losing some mining time here. However, I love that he's still making probes. I love that he has full saturation on his main base, which uh, definitely is a great thing. The stalker count now up to an ominous five. The five-minute stalker timing. We got the plus one attack, and we have blink. Oh, God, my body is ready. I actually don't know if my body is ready for this. Uh, for some Bronze League hero blinking action, you bet your biscuits I'm excited. Uh, I will say, though, that MVP is going for the Bronze League hero crusher build, as I like to call it. Going just for Marine and Marauder is actually the easiest way to, wins a uh, to win a Bronze League game if you're a Terran because it's such a robust style of play. Those units, if you just attack move to your opponent's base, uh, you have the highest chance of winning if there's no micro involved. Now, oh my god, he is not going to be getting dropped or spotted by observers anytime soon. He is going crazy town with the missile turrets. He's got four missile turrets, three in the main. And, oh, he's going to build another one right next to this one because our Protoss player may be going for Void Rays that will attack this location directly. All right, we got the other proxy pylon. He's got it set up here on the low ground, the probe there. He's like, hehehe. <laughs> Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, also shame on me because I never get that saying right. But the proxy, oh, he's got to put cannons. <laughs> I think I just broke my voice. I'm sorry, guys. I'm going through puberty, all right? We all know this. So he's got the double cannon. Can't call it a contain. Can't call it a rush. The proxy cannon. So he's got the double proxy cannons over here in the center-ish of the map. I really don't know what the point of these is, but I, I got to give him credit for his creativity. Maybe he's onto something here that has not been discovered by the pro gamers yet, and this build will be stolen for the rest of time. Now, Blink Stalkers, they are just that. They have Blink. They have plus one attack. He's working on the shield upgrades, because why the hell not? He can actually win this battle. He should just engage us here. All right, Blink Micro. Blink Micro. He tried to micro it individually. Blink, 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 Blink. No, nope, it's not going to happen. He's got to lose all those Stalkers, or at least more than he should have. All right, here he goes to the natural. And he's got to be careful. He can Blink away. He can Blink away. Blink is done researching. Where is the Blink? Ah! All righty then. Well, some great Blink Micro showcased in another game because we are not currently witnessing that right now. The probe over here just hanging out by his two little cannons. We'll see if those cannons actually play a role right now. MVP's going to be way ahead after that kind of blunder. Now, I will say Dr. Trevor, very well played on the 24 probes on each location. I got to say that is great. We hardly, Oh, my God, he just warped in like a million stalkers. Uh, he does have a lot of gateways here. I got to hand it to him. His saturation is good. His gateway count is good. Micro could use a little bit of work. Uh, his macro could use a little bit of work. But he is able to warp in lots of stalkers here. So that is awesome. Look at that. He's warping them in right now. Very nice. Very nice. 
Unfortunately, Mass Stalker is worthless versus Marine Marauder. We'll see if this actually ends up panning out for him, though, as he does have a supply advantage. He's not even supply blocked either, so that is going to play out into his favor. We'll see if he can actually manage to pull this off, though, as he does have a lot of stalkers. How many stalkers is he actually up to right now? 16 stalkers, 61 probes. He has double probes. That is fun. MVPs could definitely work on his saturation. And uh, does he have enough energy for mules? Apparently, you can't see the energy bar now, as apparently it disappears when it's full. All right, good to know. Full energy there. The other command center almost has full energy, so that's going to be a lot. What is this? This is the Great Wall of Pylo over here, as he's got lots of pylons coming down. So I guess Zergling counterattacks aren't going to be a threat. Not that they really ever are in PvT, but uh, they cannot be getting past this wall. If he drops one more pylon, man, he is just recreating the map as he sees fit. And maybe maybe that's how you have to play it. All right, the Stalkers are here, ready to blink. Oh, no, he can't! <laughs> All right, he's trying to blink up on the high ground. Oh, God, I almost feel bad. That's not quite how blink works. Oh, no, he did it again. <laughs> All right, well, the only time we saw him blink into the game is when he doesn't have vision of the high ground. So he learned a valuable lesson today. You can't blink up there. But, man, is he never going to lose power on his warp end. That is for sure. Dr. Trevor up to 139. We'll see if he's got a prescription for pain. Does take out the Raven. We'll be able to kill the uh, the Thor right there. He's actually going to go straight into the main base. No, decides to back out for now. The expansion, though, is vulnerable. And here he goes. All right, as long as he doesn't blink forward, he's got to be just... Oh, he blinked forward. Oh, God, the big stim. Oh, no, these stalkers, the worst blinks in the world. That's exactly what we're watching right now. The blink for No, he's blinking more of them forward. You do not want to blink towards Marina Marauder. Oh, he did it again. Oh, make it stop. Make it stop. These are the world worst blinks of all time. I wish that there was an America's Funniest Home Videos for StarCraft because this would win the $100,000 grand prize. What is this? These do not allow you to make stalkers quicker as he goes for the proxy for cybernetics course here. After those wonderful, wonderful blinks that we originally witnessed, now he's following it up with the Cybernetics Core Contain on the back of the Pylon Contain. He does have lots of Stalkers. Still somehow has a lot of money in the bank. Uh, oh, blinks for Look at that. He did a great blink. He's actually going to take out some units, and now all of a sudden he has the micro of a, a champion. Oh, but he's got to be careful right now. He wants to run away from these units. Now would be a good time to blink away, to blink away, not run towards the enemy. Uh, where are you? All right, well, at least he hasn't lost these stalkers just yet. He's doing quite a bit of damage right now. More units are on the production. Uh, I don't think he has enough to win here. He does have enough to kill off several Marines. He could just warp in more stalkers. I'm just saying that uh, might prove to be effective. Oh, he blinks forward again. I think this could be it. You know, it turns out if you lose your entire army three times, it's really hard to win games. Uh, pro tip of the day. You can't blink on the high ground if you don't have vision. I gotta say, his his build order was masterful. He was like Dr. Evil, man. He is like, all right, I got this awesome game plan. I'm gonna make mass blink stalkers blink right in the main. It's gonna be great. Oh, I don't have vision there. So I think he learned a valuable lesson today, which is do not blink into entire uh, marine marauder balls, number one. Number two, you should probably have vision of the high ground before attempting to blink there. And number three, he didn't make a single. No, he blinked forward again. I don't know what he expects to happen. What is it called? Insanity is when you try the same thing multiple times, expecting a different outcome. That is exactly what we witnessed here. But I got to hand it to Dr. Trevor. Not a single unit other than Stalkers was made today. And there goes the probes. They definitely have this, guys. I think his secret weapon has been revealed, which is a Congo line of immobile probes. As uh, MVP was victorious, he's got to scout it out a little bit before he ends up leaving the game. Oh, wow. All right, pro tip of the day. Do not blink onto a high ground that you can't see, number one. Number two, do not blink directly into a bunch of Marine and Marauder unless you are absolutely sure you're going to win that battle. This game almost gave me a heart attack. That is why I love Bronze League Heroes. So if you guys want to submit your replays, definitely do that. You can send it to huskyreplays at gmail.com. And my good friend Invicta will sort through them. He's an awesome guy. He live streams the process quite a bit. 
So thank you, everyone, for submitting your replay. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Pro blink of the day will have to happen in a different video. Hello everyone, this is HGS Kioski here back with some more Bronze League Heroes! I feel like I should join a second band with those kind of pipes on me. Anyways, it is going to be Bronze League Heroes where we cast the very best of the very worst up in the top left side. It is going to be Dins J, who says, Great game, lol, I'm in bronze. I get a gold, then a silver. So he is evidently complaining about the matchmaking. Wait, is this going? Uh, no, that's right, okay. What kind of matchmaking is that? You know what, bro? I feel you. It constantly puts me against master level players. I do not consider myself masters at all. But uh, he is going to be complaining about that. Dexter, though. Oh, I did introduce Dexter. Down the bottom right side is going to be Dexter from the world-renowned uh, Showtime series Dexter, where he kills people with a big knife in the heart. He says, yes, the ranking does suck. He is going to hide the most obviously placed pylon of all time. And again, this is when you know it is going to be a good Bronze League Heroes. The games may be bad, the players may be bad, but it is just so good. Is he going to drop a forge? Of course he is, because this is Bronze League Heroes. That is what it's all about. Overlord going to be scouting out. I believe this Overlord is very, very late uh, on the scout there. The drone's going to be moving out as well. He will catch a glimpse of what is going on. And what is going on? Well, something absolutely hilarious, which is going to be what appears to be a cannon contain am i am i seeing this correctly is this developing correctly before me it is going to indeed be a cannon contain one drone is going to get pulled off the line should really stick those drones onto the probe if uh, if you stick a bunch of them there then you can chase around that probe it's very difficult for him to actually place those cannons now at this point you can either try and pull off all your drones to clean it out uh you can put an expansion here to try and build spines or you can just kind of one base it for a little bit which considering how much the zerg player is actually invested into it that might be oh, okay he is going to return the favor we may be having some sort of proxy hatchery also placed in the most obvious of places which uh, i find to be quite entertaining i think his first cannon will get taken out not so sure on this second cannon, though, as three drones are more than enough to slowly whittle it down. Uh, Din J is trying to focus these down. I don't know if he has enough drones off the line. He actually decides to retreat here. So, well, they kind of decide to retreat as they're chilling out on the ramp. But for now, they are going to be allowing these cans to complete. So, Dexter is uh, basically going to allow the cannon contain to get established. And this will be preventing our Zerg player, Din J from uh, either expanding or do or pressing out in the center of the map anytime soon or anything like that. But he does have this proxy hatchery, which has not been scouted by Dexter. Dexter has been too busy planning down cannon after cannon. He has nothing in his base right now. You know what he could actually do here is just make several Zerglings and win the game right away. That would be that would be the smart thing to do. Uh, I don't know if proxy hatchery you know is is a smart thing in the first place. But given the situation, I feel like he could get away with it. The hatchery now is going to complete. This has not been scouted yet. There's the one Overlord over there. Got to be scouting this out as well. And uh, the hatchery is done. So what does he decide to build? That's going to be the real question there. We'll see exactly what happens to this first larva. But we do have spine crawlers now. Uh, we got the static defense. I don't think there's a single army unit in the game right now. Nope, only workers and one queen. And then there is four cannons and currently a spine crawler. Three larva ready to go on this proxy hatchery, so he's deciding to wait. But I'm telling you, Zerglings right now could just run in there and win him the game if he was to make those. But this is Bronze League Heroes. Every time pro tips of the day get completely ignored. I, I would say if I was to give a pro tip of the day that it would definitely be to go for Zerglings. Uh, however, he is deciding to go ahead and go for three drones, so he may have the return uh, spine crawler contained. Not nearly as common as the cannon contained, but uh, still equally as interesting. And Dexter, obviously not having scouted this base yet, is dropping down even more cannons. At what point are there diminishing returns on these cannons? I think it was about eight cannons ago. So I don't know how useful this is actually going to be. Is that another cannon? No, that one's actually a pylon. But uh, the spine crawlers will finish. There's not even a zealot on the way. We could be seeing a cybernetic core come up for Dexter, and we do. So that's going to be going down, and the spine's going to be moving forward as well. I don't think they're going to be in range of anything right now. Uh, once they get burrowed here, the cannons are still too far back. However, it has been spotted 
The probe attempting to expand, but not today, as the spines are going to be down. <laughs> Dexter says noob as he has four probes not in one gas but in both gases so Dexter with the big words here are gonna be throwing down cannons as well uh Dinje saying I'm bronze what did you expect we got a little bit of smack talk going on I love how Dexter has four probes in uh, each gas is calling it Dinje a noob and Dexter uh, is going up against a player who has no drones in gas. There he goes. He finally does put three in there. And I guess say that uh, Din J is growing on me a little bit. He actually did put the uh, the drones back in there. And he's, he's a pretty funny guy. He's, he's making me laugh anyways. The double cannon got to be on the way. Twilight Council got to be going down. One can only assume this is going to be for Dark Templar. And you, you absolutely know it's a Bronze League game when it is a cannon rush into smack talk which is very important you have to include the smack talk into dark templar follow-up that link are going to attempt to run in here they may kill off a zealot oh that zealot there super super lucky the two links make it to the mineral line uh i think that the cannon there killed off the other one and the probes will finish the rest so it is going to be delaying mining but uh oh, oh they're still chilling out he, what what are you doing he just <laughs> I'm pretty sure he actually just tried to make the Zealots mine minerals there, which uh, doesn't quite help you. All right, let's see if he actually lines up. Nope, he put four in there again. And let's see the other gas. There's three. And he, he individually adds the fourth one there. Uh, obviously, Din's J is the noob, though. Definitely not Dexter here. So Dexter up. Pro tip of the day. It's three probes on gas. Not saying I don't make the same mistake. But I will say, I don't call people noobs. So, uh, for that reason alone, we can just sit back and laugh at him. But anyways, Dark Shrine going to be going down, adding on additional gateways here. So we are going to be seeing Dark Templar. Now, the real question is, is are the Dark Templar going to be for attacking? Or are they going to be for breaking out of this contain? Now, Zerg players very rarely do get to set up a contain. But uh, that is going to be just fine. As the Spinecrawler is going to be at the top of the ramp, the uh, cannons at also the top of the ramp right now and it does look oh with the long distance mining as well how cute is that gonna be supplementing his income he's like selling stuff on craigslist you know it's not a lot of money but it helps supplement your income a little bit coming in here and there the uh, dark templar should actually be ready pretty soon there's going to be the first two and he should be able to actually just kill this with the Dark Templar. Zelda's going to get taken out right away. Banelings are good to go. There's just nothing here to spot the Dark Templar. So I think that contain is going to be broken first as Din's J. Din's, Din's G. Din's, I still am not sure how to say that name, but we're just going to go with it. Um, actually not doing that bad on the inject larvas, I got to say. Uh, keeping his queen energy surprisingly low for a monthly game. And the Banelings trying to make something happen there. But no, no such luck as they, oh god, is he going to bring four probes back in? Of course he does, because he's Dexter, the pro gamer that we don't need, but we deserve. Or something, I don't know. I don't know, but we got the Dark Templar guy moving out now. And this contain should be broken. I love how he's actually expanding to this location. The Zergage right there gets sliced down immediately. Trying to throw down another spine. It's going to be too late. But look at that. The spine crawler is making a mad dash to get away all the way across the map. And then they're off of creep, so they move so slow. I got to say, it was a valiant effort by DisJ uh, with the contain, but more importantly, with trying to save those spine crawlers. Uh, a valiant effort there. It just was not meant to be. There is the one drone over here. I'm sure he is destined for greatness as uh, he's going to be chilling at that natural. Oh, he is actually going to hide it. This drone has become self aware. He realizes, I need to hide right now so I don't end up dying. Uh, the Overlord can, uh, he can technically see where the DTs are if he's paying attention. I highly doubt that, that he is, but look at that. They slowly, slowly disappear there. Looks like the Overlord's going to get taken out as well. Oh, the drone's going to make a bad dash for it. No, he decides to retreat there. Probably the smart choice. This is the only drone that can really expand at this moment. The Spore Crawler, though, is going to be down for Din's J, so he knows what's up. He also has a Spire off of one base uh doesn't have a whole lot of gas to use that spire but he has three overlords on the way so hopefully we'll be unsplied like somehow this drone makes it past how did he do that how did he actually make it past those four stalkers so the one drone has escaped he is going to be doing a ninja expansion over here and uh, we'll see if dexter the prestigious silver league superstar we'll see if he can uh, maybe maybe that should be a whole another series on its own 
Uh, hello everyone, this is ATS Yeski here, and welcome to Silver League Superstars! I don't know if it's got the same ring to it or not, but still it's quite fun to say. And uh, it's fun to kind of reminisce about other series that could be coming in the future. We do have the plus one attack on the Mutas. That is a very important upgrade as the Glaive Worms do bounce. So really it's not plus one, it is plus multiples of one. Uh, because it will hit multiple targets. The Hatchery, though, might actually complete here. I feel like Dexter, while his main base is saturated quite well, still has the four probes on gas. Uh, I feel like by now he could have just looked up how many probes go on gas. And uh, Google would obviously tell you three. And he adds another pylon. So he's got to go ahead and add that in. I think he killed one of his own buildings to get the DTs through. And now they are officially trapped in here once again. They cannot actually get down that ramp. So he has trapped in his own units. The hatchery over here for Din's J is going to complete. Can Dexter manage to spot this? That is going to be an absolute crucial thing. Although he himself does have his own expansion. Got to be killing off his own pylons there. Maybe the DTs are going to be moving out to try and scout these expansions. And here they go. They've been told to go there, there, over there. And then they're going to come back down... Oh, wait, 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 I messed it up. I messed it up. So he's going there, there, there. Uh, wait, wait, no, he's going there, and then there, and then here, and then here, and then back over here. All right, so they've gotten a lot of commands. Unfortunately for Dexter, none of them are to scout this location. There's going to be the first gas coming up. More drones on the way. He's actually going to get a queen out here as well. So Din's J man with the hidden expansion, although he is at a huge supply deficit. So this is not looking good for him. We do have an observer and a war prism, the most terrifying units for Bronze League heroes to have. And uh, we do have the robotics bay on the way as well. So Colossus actually going to be really, really good at this situation. I mean, this is not looking good for Din's J right now. Although he does start getting up a lot of Mutalisks right now. He's got one drone in gas. He's going to be building another geyser with that other drone. And he also has the queen over here, which has injected larva. So he will have a big wave of drones right there. However, the DTs are on the hunt. They're on the prowl. They're looking for those hidden bases. So far, uh, no bueno there as he's not able to scout them out. But he still does have the other command to apparently move back all the way to the top right side hopefully for him though he does scout the other locations the only bases he hasn't scouted are the ones that are closest to him which uh, logically makes sense you would expect your third opponent to expand far away from you but no Dens J with the mind games is going to be hiding the expansion in the absolute best place it doesn't think the Dark Temple are going to be moving out still trying to spot those bases but again no luck what is our Protoss player spending his money on because he actually has really good income but uh, overall, I just don't know where that money is going. Does he, is he investing in Beanie Babies? Where is this money going? No one actually knows. We do have Zealot Legs going to be on the way and another robotic. So I like the idea of what Dexter is doing here, uh, minus the 20 cannons that he has placed right now. But uh, the DTs are like, all right, we've, clo we've combed the entire desert. We, uh, we, we know for a fact that there are no bases, but guess what? There is a base. It's over here. And he actually has the, uh, the six drones overall on gas, which is huge, because that is going to be adding to his Mutalist Cloud. Now, my favorite part is how our Protoss player had two observers. He, he still does, but they're chilling inside the main base. They, they are observing the main base, which is, uh, you know, it's good to have a manager there, someone to oversee what's going on. But unfortunately, they are not scouting these Mutalisks, which now have plus two attack, by the way. Uh, I think he needs the Hive Tech. Yeah, he needs Hive Tech for plus three. But you are able to stay on uh, Lair Tech quite effectively with those plus two attacks for quite some time. And with this hidden base over here, I feel like Din's J is slowly starting to eke out an edge here. I love how Dexter has not spotted this yet. There is going to be a drone throwing down an expansion over here. I don't even know how did this drone get out. Did he build it all the way over here and then run it over? Either way, there is going to be a base on the way. And as if right on cue, the Observer and War Prism are going to move out. We are about to see some of the most Gosu drops we have ever seen. Currently, we're seeing about 10 APM out of these players, which is also pretty awesome. The Dark Temple are going to be chilling out over here. And the War Prism. Can he actually make anything happen with this? He will spot this expansion. Look at that. Right when the expansion goes down, we'll be able to spot that one which is actually going to be giving Dexter a false sense of security I feel like he's gonna be like well I got him stuck on one base so I'm gonna be in pretty good shape right now but will the DTs actually back up to uh, to kill this off uh, I'm kind of curious on what the army supply is or overall units that he has he's got four stalkers six dark Templar eight zealots uh, only four units that can actually shoot air here and there's gonna be the cancel the war prism has actually won that battle 
single-handedly. He scared the drone out of turning into a hatchery. However, this base is still going to be alive over here. Alive and well, I might add. Double Colossus is going to be on the way. And uh, the Observer, where are those Observers at? These are the biggest slacker Observers I think I've ever seen. We do have a third base going to be coming down for Dexter right now. And uh, we'll be able to kill off these rocks as well. Oh my god, did he actually... Uh, okay. All right, never mind. I thought that uh, he was just going to uh, leave those rocks there. Does decide to go ahead and take them out. And the probe's going to be chilling out over here. Uh, just waiting for the Nexus. I mean, world's earliest transfer, but they don't have a whole lot going on. Oh, my God. The Mutalists are going to reveal themselves. They've made it all the way across the map and to a completely undefended location. Where are you going, Mutas? You're running around the probes. You're, you're beating around the, the bush right now. He's going to be going right here. There's only four Stalkers. More Stalkers going to warp in. But one Colossus goes down. These probes completely undefended. The Stalkers are going to try and get over here. But with that sweet, sweet, delicious Bronze League Micro, he's able to kill off a couple of probes right now. And who needs micro when you have this many plus two, plus one mutilus? Gotta be able to take out all these stalkers, all the probes with it as well. Gotta get taken out. All of a sudden, Dexter realizing, rut row, there's something going on here. I was not prepared whatsoever. The mutilus right now are gonna be able to take out a lot of these here. Uh, the main base looks to be completely undefended. Sands two cannons. Oh, these probes have never even got a chance to mine. Look at the great pylon wall over here. What is it with Bronze League heroes and pylon walls lately? That is apparently a thing, but it does look like right now the Colossus and the army's going to be out. Somehow Dexter is still basically tied in supply, even after essentially losing all of his workers. Uh, but pretty soon his gateways are going to be unpowered. There's not going to be any reinforcements. And it does look like right now. Oh, the Zell's trying to run up there, but the main League's able to scare them away. Oh, God, he's trying to break up that ramp. It's not a good idea. Apparently, a bunch of Banelings, man. They, these have been the longest surviving Banelings in a long time, just chilling around for several minutes. And uh, the Meatless is going to go completely unchecked inside the main base. Of course, uh, Dinjay's macro may be slipping a little bit, but his manhood is growing. He just unpowered all of those gateways. All of a sudden, I feel like Dexter feeling a little bit uncomfortable. He does have a lot of probes up here, but he does not have enough money for a Nexus. So if he does not mine more money off of these two remaining Nexi, then he is not going to be able to uh, throw down another base. Oh, God, probes, what are you doing? What are you doing, probes? Whatever you're doing, it's probably a very bad idea. He could cancel his blink, actually. This might, uh, is that going to give him enough money if he cancels that? I think that it will. The probes are going to cautiously go there. The base has been spotted, but guess what? 10 more Mutas, 12 Leagues are already on the way. You cannot kill this base fast enough because it has already done the damage. 10 more Mutas going to be on the way. And I gotta say, as a Protoss, I can heavily relate to uh, losing to Mass Muta play, but in this case, it is absolutely hilarious and I have no sympathy. More uh, more Mutas are on the way. Overall, Mutalist count is up to 28. And the Colossus right here, where are you going, guys? You want to be very, very careful about this. The probes are going to take out a hatchery there, so nice victory for them. And the Colossus, what are you doing? Why would you rush us directly into the main base? Top three, Colossus control. Here we go, the attack. <laughs> Oh, his last chance to break down the static defense and run in his DTs, and he goes for the Spore Crawler inside the main base. That was some top three Colossus control right there, and I don't think he has enough for a Nexus at all. I mean, he might stay a chance putting a Nexus here and then hoping that the Mutas fly into the cannons or something equally as silly. Oh, God, this has been an amazing episode, but I feel like the Mutas, there are enough here just to take on the cannons. Hey. Take on me, take on me, why are there no Archons ever when you need them? And I think the DTs are going to get taken out by the Banelings anyway. Uh, yes they did, there's only one DT remaining. I feel like even one or two Archons may have been enough. But Dinjay is going to be your Bronze League hero this game. The DT going to town on the drone. But it doesn't matter if you're a master, it doesn't matter if you're an executor, because you're still really bad. And that DT going to try and make it happen. But unfortunately, he just doesn't he just doesn't have what it takes. And he's got to try and micro him to his heart's content. But my god, he just threw that game away into the wind. Threw it into the garbage disposal, and it is now gone forever. He still has Blink right there, and then he ends with the good old noob before he leaves the game. Uh, Denzje says, ha-ha, we'll see if he has the comeback or not. Uh, sorry, Mr. Pro, that is so true. 
so very true. So Denzje is going to be your Bronze League hero. There's no, actually, it's impossible for him to recover. And Dexter has officially left the game. Oh, God, I kind of want to go back really quick to, I, to what I would say is the pivotal moment which was that top three Colossus control. Anyway, I think it's uh, I think it's way past this. Let's just let's just go ahead and speed this up. Let's relive this together. This glorious, glorious game. Uh, it started with a cannon contain, went into a spine crawler contain, went into a proxy base that the, our Protoss players scouted everywhere. But there, look at this. He tries to run the DTs up there, loses almost all of them. Those bane links, absolutely terrifying. And honestly. I don't know what it is about Bronze League heroes, but they just hate Archons. They, they will build 500,000 Zealots and never make a single Archon. They'll, they'll make a lot of DTs, but never turn them into the Archons. So, Dins J, I got to hand it to you. Good job navigating your way through Bronze League heroes. You are a true champion. So, if you guys like to submit your replays, my friend Invicta is the one who sorts through them. You can send them to huskyreplays at gmail.com. And don't send them anywhere else. Don't send them to my other email. It is just huskyreplays at gmail.com. If you have sent one to my other email addresses, I don't check those uh, replays there. Only at huskyreplays at gmail.com. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. This has been Bronze League Heroes, and I'll see you guys next time. Hello everyone, this is HSKSK here back with another Bronze League Heroes! Oh my god, I feel like I'm at the top of a mountain every time I yell that out. Maybe I should go to like the Grand Canyon or something and just yell that out. But regardless, let's introduce our players down in the bottom right side. It is going to be DTP's world famous Face Melta. Is going to be the uh, red Protoss down there. And down the bottom left side, finishing his last placement match. It is going to be Demigods Schmango. So we got Schmango versus Face Melta. Maybe it's Demigods, but it's the shortened version. Either way, this is going to be a matchup of the centuries. A lot of you guys, you watch like UFC, MMA fighting and all that. They have nothing on the brutal game that we are about to witness here. That is just a prediction. I actually am not quite sure. I have my good friends in Victor sort through the games. If you would like to submit your replay to Husky Replays, uh, or excuse me, to Bronze League Heroes, then send it to huskyreplays at gmail.com. Do not send it anywhere else. Do not send it on Facebook. Do not send it on any other email account. Do not tweet it at me. Just send it to huskyreplays at gmail.com. My friends in Victor will... Uh, We'll take a look at him, and if it's good, he will forward it to me. Now, we do have the Assimilator cancel there by Schmango, deciding that he doesn't want to go Assimilator first here. A pretty good choice. And also, Face Melta going to have a gateway advantage now after that minor mistake. Now, I do want to say, as a Protoss player, and as someone who talks a lot and tries to multitask while playing StarCraft, I have thrown down gas first more times than I would care to admit. So I can definitely relate there. Uh, to that minor mistake, of course, it is going to be going down right after. And, oh, already a proxy pylon over here by Schmango, making the first moves already here in the PvP. Which, I gotta say, a lot of times in Bronze League Heroes, we, we tend to see non-mirror matchups. I'm really curious to see exactly how this pans out, as it is PvP. And really, I would say that, aside from ZBZ, PvP is one of the more difficult matchups to kind of grasp. Just because, at the lower level anyway, just because it's... You can warp in your entire army everywhere, so if you don't have a lot of map awareness, which Bronze League players tend not to, then uh, you can have an entire army in your base with nothing that you can really do about it. So we'll see if that actually... Oh my god, are we are we already getting a, a similar proxy pylon by Face Melta? He has his pylon going down on the left side right now. That almost perfectly lines up with the one on the right side, just, just a couple of hexes away. So both of these guys are going to be putting up the same proxy pylon in the same location. This probe is taking a little bit of a detour before it actually gets over there. But uh, we have the double gateway right now. The chrono boost with the supply block. Always a devastating move in Bronze League Heroes. So uh, ends up wasting that. But hey man, he's got his fancy pylon over here. I think that's actually his second pylon in this game so far. So he's going to have a ton of money banked up. Uh, we got Schmango over here. I feel like Schmango is a name that, uh, number one, you probably shouldn't name your kids that. But you could name, like, your ferret that. You know, or like a gerbil of some sort. You could name Schmango, I feel like. Definitely don't name your kids that, though, please. Please, for the love of your children, do not name your kids that. Hey, what up, Schmango? Uh, is Schmango here in class today? Schmango! Alright, we're done with that. But anyways, we have the one pylon here. 
powering these four gateways, which is uh, as what we love to refer to as an Artosis pylon. He may not love that we refer to it as that, but we sure do. And uh, we got the robotics facility. Got to be going down for face melta. It is going to be a proxy robotics. We got proxy robotics versus four gate. Uh, not not standard by any means to see these two matchups go together. So I don't actually know what happens at this point. I mean, what happens next here? I actually have no idea. This game is going to get underway right away, though. Sometimes in Bronze League Heroes, we'll see games that are so, uh, like, long, macro, almost a boring state. Not not today. We got both players going to be trying to rush each other here. They are not going to sit back and macro. They're going to try to attack and also macro at the same time, which is probably not going to work out that well. The Bison Core is going to be very careful as it is tentatively moving through the center of the map. Tentatively, is that the right word? Timidly. Timidly is the word I was looking for. But either way, we're going to be having Chrono boosted out. Immortals on the way. Uh, he might get supply blocked here if he's not too careful. Uh-oh, the Militia Core has been spotted. His plan has been thwarted. The Stalker uh, Sentry combination got to prove to be devastating here. I don't think he can actually save the Militia Core. There's going to be the time warp, though. Unfortunately for him, he does kind of miss micro that as uh, my body really tried to make me burp there. And I'm like, no, I'm going to power through. We have an awesome game about to take place. And the Militia Core does manage to escape, but no, the use chasing him and actually shoot it down. But at what cost? He's got to lose a Stalker and a Sentry which is definitely going to be favoring Face Melter right now. However, he's going to be going up against a, a four gate right now. So what he's going to have to do... Oh, he's got the double Twilight Council! Distraction Council commence as he's got these double Twilight... <laughs> oh, he's got the Distraction Twilight Council there. The Stalkers don't know what to do. This is going to buy him enough time. But at the same time, he himself is going to be taking the base. No, he got the Artosis Pylon. All the warp gates have been unpowered. The probes are going to retreat. My god, how many probes does he have? 28 probes. Uh, he's going to lose a couple on the way out, but they are definitely going to get taken out and uh, have to retreat there. So the Twilight Council, oddly enough, uh, not as good as it used to be. Uh, players realizing that really you don't need two of those. The probes got to try to escape. What are you doing, probes? You're just making this worse for yourself. See, oh my. What are you? What is this movement command? What are you doing? <laughs> Oh god, he could have actually escaped with these. He had plenty of time to mine 400 minerals and escape and build another Nexus, but not today. He is going to lose. I think that's actually all of his probes. Uh, no, he has two. He's got one right here who is confused as hell, trying to make it through this wall of other... <laughs> oh, I love Bronzing Heroes. It's so good. That probe actually gets stuck for a moment there. And uh, these probes, uh, I don't think you want to go that way, guys. You definitely do not want to go that way. Just trust me on this. We'll see if they actually run all the way across the map or not. But it does look like the main base for face melt. they got to get taken out. He is at a huge supply disadvantage. But you also have to remember that the army supplies overall are actually favoring face melta here. So what face melta actually needs to do is uh, basically just run over here and kill this nexus. Should be able to seal this game. What he needs to do though is kill this nexus, run back over here, kill this nexus. Should be able to win in a straight on fight. Unless, unless the probes actually get pulled off the line. That, that would be very, very effective because there's just not enough units for them to easily deal with the probes. Because if you have the probes and the army supplies are the same, that's going to favor the guy with the probes. Uh, that, that's not expert analysis. It just is what it is. We do have two probes over here. Uh, one is sniffing the other one's behind. So we'll just go ahead and leave them to their own devices up there. But anyways, this main base is going to get taken out. Unfortunately, Face Melta really needs to move out to try and kill the space. Because, oh my god, those probes in a single file line. There they go. They're going to split up just a little bit. But uh, you got to remember that Schmango now does have income, while uh, Face Melted does not. So he really needs to find a way to deal with that base. Although he is doing a good job of killing off the main base, killing off these pylons as well is going to help further that supply block, which will just delay more and more units for a greater duration. And so he does kill that off. What he wants to do now, move out all the way across the map. But I mean, look at this mini-map. What is it with Bronze League Hero Games and just ridiculous looking mini-maps? He's like, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and throw my gateways over here between the natural and the fourth base. Obviously, that's how this works out. So he does have the other uh, two gateways there. Two pylons are down. And I still got to say, though, Face Melt has stands a pretty good chance here. Army supply is still 20 to 18. And with such a large uh, supply block there, unless he throws down a bajillion pylons, which currently Schmango is not, because that would be the smart thing to do. And uh, here on Bronze League Heroes, the games may be bad. The players may be bad, but they are just so good. We see the Stalker's going to be moving out now. He's trying to find the other bases. Grabs the Watchtower. 
What he really needs to do, though, is just go for the jugular. Go for the kill right now, because every second that goes by, there's an increased chance of uh, Shmango realizing that he just needs to build pylons, which he is actually doing that just now. Four pylons on the way. Is that actually going to free up the supply block? We are about to find out. Yes, it will. He is now supply block free, and warp gates are actually done, so we can start warping into more units. But it looks like base belt are going to attack before that really starts to kick in here. We're going to see if he actually has enough. We'll keep an eye on the army supply. 16 now, 14 to 18. It looks like baseball to get a little bit of momentum, but at the same time, more zealots have arrived. Got to be chasing this uh, this army around. Oh my god, who's actually going to win this? I seriously don't know right now. He has actually managed to kill off the entire army. More zealots trying to warp in. All of a sudden, baseball is the pro MLG micro status. Look at that stutter step, man, with these immortals. I don't know if he can actually keep in with the warp and cooldown, though, as these immortals, there's only two immortals left. He's trying to take everything out. He's got the ones up. He needs to run Zelda into the probe line, and that Zelda's actually going to die right away. He is killing several probes right now. Keeping in mind that uh, immortals do two shot probes, they take a lot more shots, though, to kill immortals because, uh, excuse me, to kill zealots because zealots are not an armored unit. He will be able to kill off those ones as well. He needs to start camping these probes. Kill the probes, not the pilots. Kill the probes, kill the probes, kill the probes, kill the probes, kill the probes. Oh, he's not going to kill the probes, is he? Yep, he's not going to. More warping in right now. He was able to delay the warp in for a little bit, but uh, he lost his chance to kill every single probe there. So he's got to try and micro as best he can, but there's just way too many zealots. Four zealots going to be chasing around the immortals. And here we go. The immortals are off. They're going to be going around the first turn, and they're coming down those straight away right now. They're going to be making a little bit of room on the zealots. The zealots trying to catch them right now, but can they do a 2.25 movement speed right now? 2.25 movement speed on the immortal. Here we go. More zealots going to be warping in, and the immortals going to be taking the second turn right now. They're going to be going around the corner, and they're going down the straightaway. Can they actually make it to the finish right here? He's going to be going around. He He's going to be going around, and it looks like the Zelda's going to be gaining here just a little bit. They get a slightly better angle. They're getting dangerously close to the Immortals right now. Can they do it? Can the Zelda's catch up? Yes, they can. They get two swipes in. I don't know why I've become a horse race announcer. We're going to keep it. And it looks like the Immortals for baseball. They're going to be going around the second turn, and they're going to be taking a shortcut right now. He's trying to move around the corner, and he's going to be going around. And, and, and it looks like he's going to be able to get a little bit of a lead right now. The Zelda's are going to be catching up here slowly but surely. He has queued up an entire lap around these buildings. We could be here all day, folks. We could be here all day. No, the Zelda's taking a little bit of damage. Uh, going to be dealing out that damage towards us. They're going to be trying to intercept. They come from the right side. It looks like, no, they're trying to go south, but they get surrounded, and the Zealots have done it. The Bronze League Hero Zealots have done something useful. Oh my god, there's the LOL and the GG man with the zero supply. He didn't stand a chance, but I am going to upload this as the Bronze League Zealots have been redeemed. They have done something useful, able to chase that down, and what a hilarious base race that was. Oh, God, I love Bronze League Heroes. It is so freaking good. The, I, I think my favorite part was the distraction double Twilight Councils. Can we just go back for a minute? Can we just re-experience that moment in Bronze League Heroes history when those two, those two things, those two Twilight Councils went down? They were really the unsung heroes, I feel like. Oh, there we go. There we go. In the eyes of an angel, or however that song goes. Oh god, there they are right there. They are so glorious. Something I have never seen in the history of StarCraft. And look at this, they worked out perfectly because as soon as that army gets over here, they're attacking the Twilight Councils. He, he has more than enough time to mine 400 minerals. He decides not to, of course, as we later find out. And, uh, yeah. I almost want to resume from replay right here to see if he could have actually ran away and built that and made that happen. I think he could have done it. He just had to run the probes away. Although more Zealot and his sentry were on the way. And I mean, look how look at how much time these uh, Twilight Council is by. He's up there within 400 minerals, uh, near 400 minerals, that is. And could have easily done it. I feel like face Melta, you had an opportunity. And it just was not meant to be today. It was not meant to be. Distraction Twilight Council's ho! Hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys next time. Hello everyone, this is HGS Gaske here, back with some more Bronze League Heroes! Oh god, seriously, I love saying that so much. The day that I don't say that and enjoy it is the day that I am dead. Although I don't actually know if I would say that the same day that I died, but either way, that's very morbid, and what is not morbid is going to be this PBT between Neos down in the bottom right side. And up at the top left side, it is going to be Space Wizard. Apparently, it is going to be a PVT here today. And uh, he's saying, man, I've had some bad luck so far today. Welcome to my world, buddy. Welcome 
to my world. But anyways, the map is going to be Whirlwind, which is a very large map, should lead to, uh, now normally I would say should lead to a macro game, should lead to some interesting strategies out of these players. We should be seeing some refined builds. And I'm, I, no, no, this is Bronze League Heroes. We're not going to be seeing any of that. So uh, I, I never know what to expect in Bronze League Heroes. Apparently he's only got one knife. Isn't there a, uh, is it, isn't this supposed to have three knives or am I tripping? Thought for sure that had three knives, but he's, he's just got the one knife. That's all he needs to claim victory. Our Protoss, man, he is rocking the OG logo. And uh, Space Wizard also trying to get in the head of his opponent, trying to size him up, see exactly how many games he has actually played today. Uh, well, so we'll see exactly if he decides to respond there or not. But anyways, as this game is unfurling, as it is getting underway, as it is blossoming into a beautiful human being, that's kind of creepy to think about. But anyways, as it's getting underway, apparently we have a second Rax here. BT Dubs from Space Wizard. Uh, I just want to let you know, if you want to send in your replays, you can send them to huskyreplays at gmail.com. My good friend Invicta is the one who sorts through those. He's awesome, so big thanks to him. And yeah, you can send them over there. And they'll be sorted. And if they're good, maybe I'll cast them. Maybe I won't. I don't know. That's how it goes. If I cast every single game that was sent in, I would still be casting the second day's worth of replays. But uh, anyways, thanks for you guys sending those in. Remember, the whole point of Bronze League Heroes is to, uh, is to have some fun, laugh at some games, and encourage ourselves to get out there and play. So freaking go do it, guys. Why aren't you playing right now? Well, if you are, that's great, but you're also watching the video. So maybe after the video, go check out uh, go check out some StarCraft 2. Trying to think of what else. What else has been going on? Um... Uh, I was resting my voice for a couple of days, but we're kind of back uh, over that, so that's kind of old news. Uh, Total Biscuit was in town, that's kind of old news. WCS has been going on, that's old news. Shoutcraft America is over. That, that's new news, actually. Uh, if you didn't watch the finals to Shoutcraft America, this is going to be a spoiler. So, spoiler alert in three, spoiler alert in two, and one. Kane ending up taking that like a boss. Oh my god, he's so good. Uh, he is from Canada, so everyone from Canada, round of applause for Kane. Gotta say, he actually played extremely well, and uh, he had a lot of close calls. I think at one point, uh, not, not in the finals, he basically dominated the finals, but to get to the finals, I think two of the rounds, he was one loss away from being eliminated, which is actually kind of crazy if you think about it. Uh, one SCB on gas over here for Space Wizard. I guess he is some sort of wizard and doesn't need gas. Oh, he got a second one in there. He has now doubled his Vespian gas income. Uh, what is this gas for? That That is the real question on everyone's mind right now. The SCB are going to be scouting around. Uh, Neos has done a very good job of saving money. He definitely needs to learn how to invest that money, though. So we'll see if he puts it in some stocks and some dividends. Uh, maybe invest in a small real estate property. Rent that out. Might be good for him. I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see as it goes on. This probe, what is this probe doing? All right. Well, the probe apparently scouted over here was like, well, there's nothing on the natural. Probably nothing up there. This probe is so confused. He's like, all right, is that Terran player in the middle of the map? No. All right. Well, shoot. Shoot. Where do I go now? I actually don't know. All right. So we'll see if that is there. The, excuse me, the probe manages to scout the correct way or not. Wizard still mining that gas. He's up to three at a time now. Everyone's very proud of him, but he doesn't have anything to actually invest that gas in. Now, remember, you don't want to get Vespian gas just for the sake of getting it. You want to you wanna spend it on something. So we'll see if he actually does that. Uh, I think we're going to have a four racks versus a four gateway. The the build that Wizard just made. Oh, he's going to throw it on a factory. Very nice, very nice. Uh, he just invented this build where you throw down four racks. You're like, you know what? If four gate works for Protoss, Four racks will surely work for Terran. There's going to be a Stargate actually going down right now. As both players have quite a bit of money to burn here because they did not spend it in the early stages. I will say, though, that Army Supply Advantage, 22-4. Uh, 22 to 4. <laughs> 22 to 4 for Space Wizard. So he's sitting uh, really pretty right now. He just doesn't know it yet. Here's the four Army Supply of our Protoss. The Zealot's just like, you know, I feel like we've been in this game long enough. There should probably be some more units. And the Stalker's like, my life for ire. And the Zealot's like, hey, that's my line. And then I'm out of funny things to say, so we're just going to move away from that. But uh, anyways, no Warp Gate research just yet, but there is a Chrono Boosted Stalker on the way and more manually built Stalkers because that's how you do it here in Bronze League Heroes. I will, though, however, give you a pro tip of the day. Uh, I, I mean, I, how do I word this? Just don't do this. Basically... You want to get your warp gate as soon as possible in like nine out of eight different situations. 
Nine out of eight situations do you want to get Warp Gate right away. So unfortunately for him, I don't know if he's going to have this in time. The Widow Mines are actually going to be on the way here as well. The Marine, I, I almost instinctively said Marine Marauder, but no, this is, this is straight up Marines, man. The Marines go marching two by two. Hurrah, hurrah, as they're going to be moving down the bottom right side. Now, I don't know if you guys remember the part of that childhood song where the ants are marching, but they actually have giant Goss rifles that will kill you. Uh, I think they kind of leave that part out uh, mostly. Massive supply block coming on in. Uh, there is this hidden ninja base over here with one geyser chilling out, so we'll see what that's about. But the Marines are going to be moving out. There's no sign of force fields, only stalkers. And something tells me this Bronze League micro is not going to be enough to handle this, but we are about to find out as the army is going to be moving out now to the bottom right side, and lots of stalkers are in position. Now, actually, micro these stalkers win this fight. Uh, but I have a feeling that they're not going to win this fight because the brains look at that sweet stutter stepping action. Just got to run directly into the stalkers. Oh, there he goes. Now he decides to micro away. And by micro away, I mean just run away with a couple of them. They are eventually going to get taken out. And this poor cannon never got to see the light of day. Very, very close. I think his brains are actually just going to march their way into this main base. Warp Gate is not done. Does he? He has like 100 energy almost, I feel like could easily chrono boost that out, but uh, decides to chrono boost nothing and will it have everything unpowered. All right, well, this looks like it might be it for Neos. It's been fun, guys, but for now, it does look like the Marines here just got to go to town. Now, actually, I'm kind of wondering, do the probe decide to run away? How is that not pile uh, powered by this? Look how close that is. I'm calling shenanigans. If Protoss cannot make some sort of power this close to a pylon, I feel like they are not actually the coolest race anymore. But uh, I take it back. I take it back. I don't mean it. As these probes are going to run away, they will actually manage to survive as well. So, you know, I think part of the reason Space Wizard is having not much luck in his uh, in his games is that he's not making stuff. Currently sitting at uh, 1,300 minerals. Does queue up a bunch of Marines there. Very nice. And these Marines going to be chasing it. They tried to intercept it on the way out. But uh, the main base is going to get taken out here. However, is this warp gate going to finish? That is the real question. And uh, the pilot's getting so close. I think he will allow it to finish there. So warp gate is done. This one could upgrade to warp gate if he wanted to. Uh, a forge and a gateway going to be going down over here for Neos. Uh, remember, he doesn't have enough money to build another Nexus, so he is going to have to expand over there. However, like a true Bronze League hero, Space Wizard going to be expanding at the 12-minute mark with still no add-ons. He doesn't need add-ons, man. Why would you need add-ons when you could just build more Marines? A good question. That is one for the Philosophers. But it does look like right now Space Wizard able to take out the main base. A random Stalker. He's like half warped in, and he's like, uh, guys, guys, I hear, uh, I hear some shots going on. What's going on out there? And the Marines are going to cancel that Stalker. So that Stalker's going right back to Ire or Shakuris or wherever, wherever Protoss are hanging out when they're not getting completely destroyed every time in StarCraft. But uh, it does look like right now a lot of these buildings are going to get taken out. Ooh, a Void Ray going to be on the way right now. It's going to be dangerously close, and if he can actually get this out or not, we'll have to see if he manages to Chrono Boost it out. Here comes an Oracle. So for the first time, Dias has an actual attacking unit out on the map, and we'll see if he can manage to harass us. Oh, God, the Marines are out of position. Some of the Marines are in position, but the Widow Mines are not really defending anything. we got some long-distance mining going on. Here's the Oracle going to be moving out, and the Void Ray got to try and make this happen, but at the same time, the Oracle going to be making uh, moving at the same time. Oh, the Void Ray is so close. Ah, not quite yet. That Void Ray has to get canceled. However, the Oracle is the main base, man. Oracles are one of those Bronze League hero units that are just so good that they're almost broken because they will kill your entire mineral line in like two seconds. Still manages to even kill a Marine in the midst of all of that and 20 Marines for defense manages to kill that off. A lot of cannons on the way for Nias. I got to say, uh, this is pretty standard Bronze League hero play, just blocking off your entrance with pure cannon. And basically we're just going to have to see, can Space Wizard figure out what's going on? Or is this magic too strong for him? Uh, he does have, uh, does he have anything hotkeyed? He does have some of his Marines hotkeyed. Not, not all of them though, for sure. He's got, he's got like half of them. Half the, no, not even half. He's got like one fourth of them hotkeyed here. Which, uh, those are the special Marines. Those are the very, 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 very special Marines. And, but you guys, I'm emphasizing the special, okay? We'll see if they actually manage to break up this ramp. Now he does actually have enough Marines to break up this ramp right now. So I'm hoping for his sake and for the sake of just the StarCraft in general that he decides to go ahead and go up that ramp because he will be victorious. A couple more Zelts are going to be warping in right now. Uh, a fourth gateway going to be done. So we have the 15-minute four gate 
Yeah, it's a build you don't see very often, but you know, sometimes desperate times call for desperate measures. There's a scan right there. Whoops, he does see, hey, there's a cannon. Why would you scan it right here? That doesn't reveal like half of the base. But anyways, he does see this cannons right there. And more Zealots gonna be warping in. I think Stalkers would have been a better choice. But right now the Marines could go for it. They could easily march up that ramp and claim victory for the Empire. Why why they're playing for the Empire is beyond me. But uh, he's gotta march up that ramp. You can't wait for these three other cannons to finish. Uh, it's time to go, Space Wizard. Use your magical hat, use your magical broom, and run up the ramp. Wizards don't really have brooms, do they? But uh, whatever. All right, I think he's going to be giving up his chance of an easy victory. But he is currently so far ahead that uh, I can't really imagine him losing at this point. 92 supply to 42. He's got a lot of money in the bank. Oh, God, these cans are actually done now. They're actually going to begin shooting the Marines here on the low ground, which will probably scare him away, knowing Bronze League heroes. Or he'll just sit here and lose his entire army. I mean, really, the choice is yours. And uh, it does look like right there that they will indeed survive for now. Cannons on the high ground. I don't think, I think those Marines actually lost their chance. These Marines didn't though, as they are going to be totally badass taking out this assimilator. Don't worry, they'll have something to brag about when they get home a little bit later. We do have the Widow Mines on the low ground now. So, I mean, our, our Protoss player is pretty darn contained. He doesn't have any units though. I mean, yes, he's got a couple of Zealots up here, but this amount of Marines are just going to eat them like butter. And, and you may expect me to say slice through them like butter. No, we're talking about eating pure sticks of butter. And I love how this base over here is still not uh, resaturated. Everyone is too traumatized from that. The one SCV over here is like, I've seen things. I have seen things. I would not put any other SCV. Oh, wait, why does he have like no workers? Is that, am I tripping? No, he's got 13, which is not, that is not good. But hey, man, he's got plenty of money to make more. So that's going to be a thing. But anyways, lots of Marines still chilling out over here. Let's just go ahead and uh, and help these players a little bit, make them look like they're playing a little bit better by speeding it up to times two speed. We do have the Widow Mines on the low ground. So Zeltron down there, that will be quite a bit of splash damage. And what do we got on the way now? We got Twilight Council. We got a Robo. We got more gateways. So going for the six gateways on a Robo with Twilight Council randomly thrown in off of one base, a very coveted build. Uh, not as uncommon as the Terran 4 racks, but we do have the Siege Tank right here now, and if you can find a way to spot the high ground without having to burn through all the scans, might actually be able to start breaking this here. Oh, there's the Marine right there. Oh! Well, he had his chance. Uh, we'll see if anyone else gets sacrificed for the greater good. He does have enough energy to scan. Oh, he does decide to scan here. This one Siege Tank's like, I can't shoot fast enough. Scan it again! Scan it again! Uh, well, floating a building over here would actually be completely ideal. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We got a warp prism. Got to be moving out right now. Does he decide to scan once again? Where's the fatty scan? Come on, scan. Can you do it, space wizard? Use your magic wand. Uh, nope, he's not going to do it. He is not going to do it. I love this warp prism play, though. Uh, so far, more aerial harassment than I ever do in my games. That's for sure. One medevac going to be showing up. Ah, he got the medevac here to spot it. Look at this. Going to be putting on that pressure. 21 minute pressure here at the entrance. One cannon goes down. Second cannon on the way. Uh oh. SpaghettiOs. DT is going to be warping it over here. He does focus down. The oh, we actually killed both of those. All right. I didn't actually quite expect that to be completely honest. He does have the 1 1 upgrades now done. And Yas, I mean, he's been so far behind for so long. He's behind in upgrades. He's behind in bases. He's probably behind in income a little bit. It's actually pretty close there for both these players. Oh, God, here we go. Here, wait, it's not going to happen just yet. Not yet, but soon, guys. As a siege tank over here, having some fun pot shots going on. Manages to kill off another cannon. War Prism still going to be chilling out over here. Widow Mine trying to burrow, but guess what? Widow Mines are not good versus buildings. There's the scan. Oh, the Mothership Core. What are you going to do with your time warp? Actually, is he going to use a time warp? Got a siege tank, man. I love how in Bronze League Heroes, it's like, all right, I'm going to make one siege tank. Oh, God. Oh, God. Here we go. Can he do it? The Widow Mines getting some decent hits off the Marines. Do they have stim? Of course they do. Is he going to use stim? Of course he's not. Manages to kill off all of those zealots right now. Another scan coming up, but guess what? When you only make one siege tank, if you if you lose that siege tank, you don't have another siege tank. He's got to go for it. He's got to go for it. He's grown a pair and has got to go for it. And he needs to stop trying to micro. What are you doing? This attack. And the time warp right there is actually going to hold it off. The Mothership Core gets taken out. The clutchiest of clutch time warps I think I have ever seen. A great play there. More medevacs have been produced. But you know what's not being produced is more useful units. I feel like dropping right in the main base would actually be a great move. The Dark Shrine has, of course, been done for a while. The War Prism right here. And this is, this is again, 
when you know it's going to be a good Bronze League hero, when you're watching the game and you're like, all right, if he does this one thing, he wins. If he does this one obvious simple trick, he will win. And then they don't do it for like 20 minutes. That's when you know it is a true Bronze League hero game. More cannons on the way because when you are contained in your base and you are unable to expand, the best thing to do is to contain yourself by building lots and lots of cannons. I mean, ain't nobody going to get in there aside from a drop in the main or harassment on the mineral line or, you know, siege tanks. But, you know, besides that, oh, here we go. We got the Bronze League drop moving out. It's going to be going inside the main base. He's actually going to pull this off. I feel like this could be the drop that breaks the camel's back. I feel like it doesn't really make sense. But he's going to go ahead and drop right here. This is going to do lots of damage. Gateway units not that great versus Marine Marauder with Medivac backup, especially since they are 1-1. One, one. Oh, what have you done? What have you done, Space Wizard? Your main base is completely undefended. That poor Siege Tank. There's the scan. Who wins this fight? I actually don't know. Oh, God, that Siege Tank narrowly survives. Yeah, but at the same time, there's going to be that drop inside the main base. He could go for some pylons. He manages to. I love his thinking of getting Colossus as well in this one base play. But uh, going to be going for the gateways now. Are there enough units to warp in here to save? That was a big warp into the Zealots, actually. Uh, he does have Zealot legs now, which is quite impressive. Kills the Cyber next score. He's got to be careful, though, because I think this is actually enough gateway units to take it on directly. Take on me. I think he'll actually get that. It is main command. So it's going to go down. Oh my god, did Space Wizard actually throw this away? He's currently uh, tied in supply, but it's so close. The problem, though, is that he's losing his main base. He does have units on the low ground, but uh, he may actually retreat all the way home to attempt to clean this up. I mean, he could lift off these buildings. He could start making some units with these 3,000 minerals, but he's not going to do that. He's going to win with uh, by retreating to his main base. I don't, I don't really know what to say right now, but we do have Widowmites on the way. Ooh. Widow Mines could be the saving grace because there's no way to detect these right now. Does he even have a Robux? Ooh, he's out of money. He's out of money. Our Red Protoss is out of money. So all our Blue Terran has to do is sit back. He has to hold. He's got to kill these off as quickly as he possibly can. There's the scan, but where are the units? Where are the units? Why are the scans so bad every time? Oh, oh, Widow Mine. Boom. What? Why did that do, like, no damage? Am I tripping or did that only do 40 damage? What? Did that not, or did that kill a zealot? No, it didn't kill, what the hell just happened? Either way, it doesn't matter because it's Bronze League heroes. Here we go. The army's got to go in here. Does he have enough energy for a scan? He does. Scan, 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 scan. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Where's that scan? Where's that scan? Bronze League heroes never scan. Come on, there it is. Already gets at the Widow Mine. Doesn't manage to activate there. It does look at the attack now, moving inside the main base. Uh, Space Wizard, you don't need magic to make units. You've got 3,000 minerals. Time Warp goes down. Load him in the Medivacs. Oh, my God. This is going to be so close. I actually don't know who's going to win this right now. The Widow Mine right there gets a nice detonation. The Marauders somehow, as if by gifted by the Space Wizard, is able to uh, learn to micro right now. And long distance mining coming up for these probes. Where are your units? You can make units, Space Wizard. When was the last time Space Wizard made a unit? That's the real question. We have a barracks being produced somewhere. There it is. Uh, he does know about making units, right? Like, the, the ability to make units does not stop at the 28-minute mark. Uh, he can still do this. He's got Marines on the way now. Wind of Mine right there gets a nice detonation. Not enough to kill the Mothership Corps, though. We have the one low... Oh, he left the game! <laughs> Oh, he left the game? Why did you do that, Space Wizard? Oh my god, I love how Nias is still in this game. That's probably my favorite part. Uh, yeah, he's still uh, he's still moving. Oh wait, did he actually leave? I don't know. I don't think so. I think, I'm pretty sure he's still in the game. Yep, he is. I just saw him select those stalkers. Oh, Space Wizard, I, I feel for you. I, I understand your frustration. But you still had that game in the bag. You were mining. Your opponent was not. I mean, he kind of was, but lines might there. So I, I feel like there's a few things that uh, Space Wizard could have done better. Um, first of all, everything. And second of all, he actually, I think, would have won that game. Look at this. This Marauder is like this, mar this AFK Marine is being healed through the Zealot because the Zealot has no upgrades. Oh, my God. That Zealot's going to get tired, man. There he goes. Finally takes him out. And uh, I want to go back to that Widow Mine really quick. Why did that Widow Mine not do any damage? I'm so confused by that, actually. Like, I am legit confused by that. All right, so we're going to speed it up here. All right, it burrows right there. Okay. 
correct me if I'm wrong, Widowmine right here trying to hit something. Is it because the scan went away? Is that what happened? Hang on. This is so weird. This is so weird. I think it was like so like perfectly timed. Wait, I think I backed up too far. Hang on, we got we gotta rewatch the hilarity of this base dying. Uh, there goes the barracks, there goes another barracks. That sea tank's gonna get taken out as well. Alright, so I think it is the fact. Oh wait, wait, hang on, hit the wrong button. I'm sorry. No! Alright, there we go. Alright, we gotta slow it down. Okay, so there's the scan. It runs out mid-shot, so the widow mine does not hit the DT. Only does splash damage, so the DT's still alive. And honestly, that was probably just enough to win him the game. I feel like, because look, he, I think he scans here eventually, but that means, doesn't one of these units survive? Oh, that DT gets another kill there. Yeah, I, that, I, uh, uh, I mean, I know, we learned something about the Widowmine today. That if it is activated, and then the scan runs out, and you can't see the Dark Templar, it's only gonna do splash damage. The more you know. All right, so this has been Bronze League Heroes. Uh, you know, the games may not be the best, the players may not be the best, but my God, the games are so good. So anyways, if you'd like to submit your replays uh, to Bronze League Heroes, send them to huskyreplays at gmail.com. Do not send them to any other email account. Do not send them to Facebook. Do not send them to Twitter. Do not send them to your grandmother because they're not gonna get cast. Just huskyreplays at gmail.com. Anyways, hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys next time. Hello everyone, this is HESKSK here back with some more Bronze League Heroes! Uh, I was trying to hit a much higher note than usual, but uh, I think I'm going to throw out my voice attempting to do that. Oh god, dun 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 It is going to be a proxy build of some sort, I imagine it is going to involve barracks, or this is just the most ridiculously early scout ever, and uh... You know what would be a lot worse, though, is I was singing the Jaws theme. If it was a proxy Great White Shark, that would be way worse. But uh, it does look like the SCV may just be a super early scout here, man, in true Bronze League Hero fashion. Anyways, let's go ahead and introduce our players. Down in the bottom left side, it is going to be Mep. Maybe it's M-E-P, but we're going to be calling him Mep right now because I don't know better. And up at the top right side, it is going to be Super Heftig T. Super Heftig T. Not quite sure what that means, but we're going to stick to it. Of course, it is going to be a PVT. Now, as this game is getting underway with these early scouts out of both players, I want to talk to you guys super quickly. As many of you know, it is currently Comedy Week on YouTube, so there's been a lot of comedy stuff going on. They're promoting a lot of channels, and uh, YouTube said they actually want to promote my channel. So there is going to be a YouTube Comedy Week video going up on my channel shortly after this video and uh, don't don't get your hopes up but also do not freak out because they basically said hey husky do you want us to promote uh, to promote your channel and I was like you know what if there is any chance that I can get all those little kids playing Minecraft just to watch Starcraft once and get completely confused but it may just blow their minds so uh, anyways they edited the video together for me they wrote it and produced it and all of that. I was just a quick host on the video, and yeah, it'll be going up. So if you guys like it, awesome. If not, well, hey, I'm trying to bring in new people to StarCraft, all right? Everyone just chill out. Now, it does look like actually that was going to be an early scout, and uh, three SCVs off the mineral line. Back to the mineral line. As it does look like the barracks are finally going to be going down. What is our... Wait, 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 what is our pro... Has our Protoss not built anything yet? Uh, he has a pylon and an assimilator. Looks like he's going to have a proxy pylon going down. He apparently... <laughs> All right, we got the gateway here. Uh, after the barracks is already done. I say confused, scratching my head, but it does look like he is going to be going for a proxy Stargate. This is a good Bronze League Heroes uh, build, by the way, just because Oracles are so good that if you do not defend against them immediately then you lose all of your workers. However, you're supposed to have the gateway already on the way. Finally has three probes, gonna be mining gas right there, but this is so delayed that uh, it is a true bronze, now I'm gonna do it again, but it's a true Bronze League Heroes game. Pro tip of the day, make sure that you throw down your gateway if you're gonna go for some sort of proxy build. I mean, there, it's obvious to me it's gonna be a Stargate because what else would you proxy right here? I mean, maybe a Robo, but it's not gonna be gateways. It's not going to be a Robo, I don't think. I, I, it's got to be a Stargate. Is there going to be a, the uh, Cybernetics Core? Cybernetics Core, where are you? There it is. 
It is going to be heavily delayed, though. So this proxy is going to be the proxy to end all proxies. But that is okay, because Super Heftig right now just beefing his way through this supply block. He's like supply depots, supply sh depots. Schneepos. Wait, wait, what's going on? Where, whoa, 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 uh, 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 mm, what? All right, this is going... <laughs> Normally, when you do it all in with SCVs, you send the SCVs, uh, as, what are you... What are you doing, SCVs? Oh, my God. <laughs> all right, well, he, uh, he's got the all in, uh, but he is delaying it a lot, so I don't know what that's about. Anyways, we'll see if the Stargate actually manages to get down in time. The Cybernex Core is now done. Stargate. 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 All right. Well, we are going to see if it's going to be a Stargate or not because this uh, super well, quote unquote, timed all in is going to be hitting right about now. That poor Zelt's like, oh, kill me now. And uh, he will be able to kill off a couple SCVs, but you cannot stop the mighty power of the SCV rush. The delayed SCV rush. It, well, it's not really a rush at that point. It's just like the SCV attack. It does look like a Stargate going to be going down right now. Probes have been pulled off the line. The one Zelda got to try and hold his own. No, why are you on hold position? Oh, God. Oh, God, no. These poor, poor probes got put on a hold position. No, they're on hold position again. You got to stop with the hold position. The probes might actually be able to win here. There are more reinforcing units on the way, though. And no, the probes are all going to get taken out. Uh, I wonder if the hold position had something to do with that. And at the main base, Super Heftig has not been macroing at all. He's got 600 minerals. He is not supply blocked, and he is not building anything because he is focused on that sweet, sweet marine micro, and all those marines are going to get taken out. Production tab. You know, it's, it's a typical Bronze League situation to find yourself in. You're like, all right, well, I lost the army. Time to go back home and start building stuff. And unfortunately, there would be an army waiting for you if he had continued to build that entire time. Now, he has queued up uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 Marines out of three barracks, which are going to be building one at a time. The first Oracle is going to be on the way. But uh, our Protoss player, Mep, has lost all of his workers. Take a look at the workers killed here. 19 workers to 9 killed. Oh, my God, he's going to do it again. He's going to do it again. Oops, I did it again. I did it delayed all in with Marines and SCVs. Now that the Oracle is done, though, or will be here in just a moment, this is actually going to be disastrous for Super Heftig, although he does have an army advantage over here. And you may be saying, well, Met could just photon overcharge his Nexus. Let's be honest, this is Bronze League Heroes. We are not expecting anyone to photon charge anything. So we'll just have to wait and see. The Oracle is going to be chilling out over here. Did not activate its attack ability. I think that Mep is learning. Oh, you actually have to activate the ability. So we'll see if he actually managed to do that. There he goes right there. He does actually manage to activate it. And the Marines do not stand a chance. These three Marines, though, could finish the job. Half the damage has already been dealt. But no, the SCVs are all going to go down. These Marines are like, go, go, go. As they run all the way down across the map. The motion core is up. It is ready to go. One photon overcharge could make all the difference right now. But the Marines are in position. The guys start going for the pylon right now. That is going to unpower the only gateway in the game. The Oracle right here is on the hunt. But it is completely out of energy. Ten kills on that Oracle. Uh, the SCB. Oh, the Mushroom Core goes down without Photon overcharging. Uh, we're all surprised by that. Said no one ever. Workers killed is 18 to 20. It does look like Super Heftig is just going to be rocking this base. Uh, where, where are you going? Where are you going, Heftig? Oh, and he's back. And we're back. All right. All right, the SCVs and Marines are now back in the mineral line. They're trying. They're, nope, they're not in the mineral line. They're going for the gateway. All right, here we go. All right, Bronze League Hero Micro is a little bit hard to cast because it's a little bit slower than average Micro. Uh, could also drop about three mules right now. Three more Marines going to be on the way. We do have a Void Ray going to be coming up now, so it is going to be Void Ray Oracle versus these Marines right now. Now, on paper, these Marines could easily win if micro correctly. However, he didn't leave them inside the main base, so the Void Ray got to be going to town right now. Two more Marines spawned. These could be the last Marines ever built. Uh, no, you guys, that's not going to happen. That's, I'm sorry. It is just not going to happen. Trying to take out the Void Ray right there. And, uh, yep, two more Marines on the way, and that's going to be it as far as money is concerned. But uh, it does look like right now that's super heftig. He's got a lot of Marines. He's got a couple SCVs. He can try and lift off his Orbital Command to get it away right now. But the main Nexus has already gone down for MEP, so it is currently a one-base Terran versus a zero-base Protoss. Not something I find myself saying very often, but I sure as hell am today. Looks like the two Marines right here are able to bust through these shields. 
Can they kill off that Void Ray? Oh, not quite yet. There need to be a couple more Marines right there. Three more Marines going to be running up, but that means that there's going to be enough energy on the Oracle right now to be able to take those out. The three Marines getting into position. It does look like the Void Ray has activated that Prismatic Line, but two additionally out to the Orbital Command. But keep in mind that you could summon up some mules to try and mine some money, try and buy a little bit of time. The Void Ray's going to try and get away. It's so low on HP, only 44 HP. There's 76 HP on the, uh, the Oracle right now, and there are enough Marines to finish this off. Oh, another Oracle's going to be on the field. We are currently rocking 11 supply to 14 here. Now, this one Oracle could make all the difference. The two Marines right here not going to stand a chance. There's the activated ability. Oracle going to be taking out two more Marines. Can the Marines get a little bit of momentum? I still think on paper that the Marines end up winning in a straight-up fight. Got to be able to take out these buildings. Really only needs to go for the pilot. He can also drop some freaking mules. He's at full energy. Drop the mules. Drop the mules. Run your orbital. Drop the mules. Drop the mules. You're going to lose your orbital. There's going to be the prismatic alignment right there to try and take out the orbital command right now. But keep in mind, he still does have 200 energy out there. The Marines are able to take out the star gate here. He's going to try and run up the ramp. I can only assume he wants to save the orbital command. I don't think he's going to have time here. He needs to summon the mules to repair it. He's ran out of the prismatic alignment. He could save the orbital command. The SCVs are so close. They're going to try to make a mad dash over there. Oh my god, the orbital command is so low. The SCV is just centimeters away and there it goes. Now for the first time in a long time, we are going to be having a zero base Terran versus a zero base Protoss. Uh, not very often for this to happen. This is the, uh, You can't even really call it a base raise at this point. It is basically down to trying to kill off those last few units. Now what our Terran player could do if he was smart, uh, which I think he's already showcased that he is very intelligent. Oh, he got one Oracle there. Not able to get the second one just yet, but what he could do is lift these off, send them all over the place so they can't, uh, they're much more difficult to kill off with just the Void Ray. And then uh, what you want to try and do is actually just go kill the main base of, uh, of our Protoss players. So we're going to see if that actually happens here or not as the Void Ray Oracle Dance of Death is going to commence. At this point, we're basically just waiting to see can these Marines make anything happen. Mep is trying to figure out, all right, do I wait for more energy? Do I try and end this right away? It looks like a couple Marines going to be moving out right now, though. The Oracle going to be swooping on in into the main base. There is enough Marines here to hold that off. Three Marines going to be running out all the way across the map. Needs to be careful with the Oracle right now. He's at the 15 kills. Oh, God! 4 HP on that Oracle right now. We are down to 10 supply to 7. The Marines going to town, but guess what? The Void Ray is pissed. He's going to be sending that all the way back home. And wait, wait, did we lose an Oracle? I think we did. Uh, yes, we did. The Oracle with 4 HP. Did, I believe it's the one with 4 HP. Oh, no, that one's still here. Anyways, it's a Void Raid and Oracle versus a handful of Marines. They do take out the Cybernetics Corps, but that's not going to be enough right now. Is the Hero Void Raid going to be able to win this game for MEP? We are about to find out. As uh, it does look like he's going to be getting into position right now. Oracle here, ready to go. And here he goes. He's got to be so careful that he actually attacked the barracks first. Oh, God. And... Oh, it's going to survive for now. Four Marines. I mean, who ends up winning the six supply? And the Oracle gets taken out. We're going to have four Marines. It's the final countdown. All right, my voice isn't going as high as I want it to, but it uh, does look like the Void right now. Got to be moving into position. The Marines here are ready to go. This is going to be the final engagement of the game. No, the Void Ray decides to retreat right now. He's got to micro this absolutely beautifully. Let's just go ahead and speed this up back and forth. I mean, his micro, uh, his APM has at 200 on this one Void Ray. That takes skill. Oh, my God. Here we go. Here we go. This is going to be it. This is going to be it. And the Void Ray engages. He retreats as well, managing to actually take out one of those Marines. And he's going to go in. And he's back. And he's in. And oh, this is going to be it. This is going to be it. He killed off two of the Marines. There's only two left. I don't think the Marines can do it. Oh, the Void Ray down to 29 HP. Met is going to win this game not by a base, not by his macro, not by his army size. Not even by his build. He is going to win by 29 HP. I do believe that this is the closest bronzy hero game of all time. There's going to be the GG at a super heptic. This is the hero Void Ray that all Void Rays should strive to be. Look at that magnificent unit right there. Absolutely outstanding bronzy heroes. And uh, this is why I love Brawl of the Heroes. This is why it's one of my favorite series. So thank you to everyone who's been subscribing, commenting, liking, all that good stuff. You guys are delicious. Uh, that, uh, uh, that, that's probably not the best word to use. But that's what we're going to stick with. Hope you guys enjoy it. And I'll see you guys next time. Hello, everyone. This is... H well, what are you doing there, probes? We got uh, two probes moving out. Oh, nope. Just the one.
Just the one, and all right, there he goes. Hello, everyone. This is HGS Gask here, back with some more Bronze League Heroes. God, I need to take a nap after I say that every time. Anyways, it is going to be a PvP between Scabandari. Scabandari down in the bottom left side. That's that has to be a character name from a game or something. Scabandari. There's no way that that is not up at the top right side. It is going to be his opponent, Ghost X who is apparently going to be dropping his pylon on the low ground, which you would never, ever want to do in PvP ever for any any reason whatsoever, ever. Unless it was a... Wait, wait, can I... Is there a way to check? I don't think you can do it once you're in-game. Anyways, it is going to be spotted. This probe has been spotted right there. And I don't... I have a feeling that Ghost X didn't actually see it. His pylon did, but you know what they say, pylons do not have eyes. So it did not alert him to that probe's presence. And I assume it's going to be some sort of cannon rush, which that is when you know it is going to be an awesome Bronze League hero game is when there is a cannon rush involved because, you know, they're the few, they're the not-so-proud, they're the cannon rushers. So that is exactly what Scabandari is going to be. He has joined the cannon rushing marines, and we'll see if that ends up paying off or not. Ghost X trying to micro his probe versus his opponents, but keep in mind that, uh, you know, if, if they get the first zap off, you literally can't win that fight whatsoever. Now, we do have the probe. It is in position. It's ready to go. We have a gateway on the way for Ghost X trying to make a gateway expand work, it looks like. Not usually a good idea. Ah, uh, Ghost X is going to lose his probe. Boopity boop. Bye, bye, bye. And Scabandari right now, he does have that forge going down. Now, the hilarious thing is that uh, the idea of scouting, guys, by the way, the idea of scouting is to see what your opponent's doing. Now, Ghost X did not accomplish that mission whatsoever. He left way too early before the forge even went down, and that is why he is going to get cannon rush. Now, his pylon should have been already ready to go, but hey, it is Bronze League Heroes, so that is fine. The cannon rush is going to commence. There's going to be a cannon inside the main base. The second probe is going to be scouting out. We'll see if he does a better job than his fellow compatriots. Compatriots, is that even the right word? Well, that's the word we're going to be sticking with. The first cannon is going to be on the way. If this cannon finishes, this is where the, uh, the cannon rush becomes basically impossible to stop because you cannot let those cannons get up whatsoever. You will hate your life. I will say, though, that Scabandari is actually going for more workers than the average cannon rush. Oh, the probe has seen everything. Now, does Ghost X put two and two together to come up with four? Or is he not even knowing that he's taking a math test right now and uh, might not be able to figure out that he is being cannon rushed until a little bit too late? Now, getting out stalkers would actually be nice here because what you can do with the stalker is place the stalker right here. Cannons can never get in range to complete, and you're basically protected from this cannon rush. However, this is Bronze League Heroes, man. Stalkers do not exist. Remember, in Bronze League Heroes, Zealots are really bad, and Stalkers don't exist. That is the golden rule of Bronze League Heroes. And we got another pylon going to be going down as the cannon rush is going to continue. Now, the nice thing about this is at least we are seeing a game get underway right away. Now, we do have our third gateway done. I don't know why he left such a big open hole right there, but hey, his name is Ghost X. He does not care because he's got a bad ass name. I don't know, but we do have the pylon right now. It's now going to be visible. What? Where are you going, Probes? You are leaving way too... Probes, Probes, you don't have to leave yet. The cannon is not, not a threat to you. These are pylons. Probes, there you go. All right, he is at least going to go ahead and start mining again. Whew, about to have a hernia right there. So he will continue to mine right now, and uh, he can actually get up 400 minerals just fine to go ahead and expand down here, get out your stalker, protect it. Uh, protect the uh, the low ground, the high ground, all that with your stalker uh, should be pretty easy for him. Although, remember, probes, you can stay there for now. Do not. No! What are you doing? Ah! All right. So basically, he's got to be leaving with these probes. I guess he wanted to run by this cannon before it was completed. But I still feel like mining an extra three, four, five hundred minerals is probably worth it. So he does decide to go ahead and drop this down to low ground. Now he is going to have warp gate, but the problem with having warp gate is that you need money. And that is something that uh, Ghost X is surprisingly low on. He can't actually even afford a sentry right now. And he's trying to be careful with these guys right here. Probably don't want them to go up there. Oh, he's selecting all of them. Uh, all right. Well, the Nexus is now under siege. This is quite the dedication to a cannon rush. I mean, look at this. It started out with this tiny little pylon, then a cannon, then two, then three, then four. Going on over here, I guess like four, five, six over here. And he's even putting another photon cannon there. Another pylon's got to be going down. I got to say, if, if, if there's one thing that Scabandari is, it is dedicated. He has got to be dedicated to this full-on cannon rush. Just non-stop cannon right here. I mean, he has no follow-up plan. It is literally 
just cannons. He's got 13 pros over here. I think getting a couple more out would actually begin benefiting him right now. Considering that Ghost X income is a whopping zero, I think that adding on a couple more pros for himself might be a good idea because pretty soon, I mean, what is the pro count even at? 15 to 20. Keep in mind that Scabandari only has 14 probes on his mineral line. So there's actually going to be a mineral income advantage for Ghost X here as soon as this gets fully saturated right there. And uh, 20 probes at 24, that's actually really, really good. Now, the main problem is, is that uh, Ghost X cannot mine gas. What he needs to do is make some stalkers. Oh my god, he actually made some. He made two stalkers, everybody. Oh yeah. Ghost X right now is growing a pair, and by a pair, I mean two small-sized brains. And it's going to be rubbing those brains together to start making some stalkers. And we will see if he can actually hold this up. He just puts the stalkers right here. Cannons cannot be a threat to him anymore. He does not have to lose his natural. He is sure as hell giving up his main base as that is going to be, it's gone. I mean, there's only an assimilator left, and it's gone. So we now have a new home base up on the top right side. Another cannon got to be going down for Scavendari. And by one, uh, why not Why not do two? If you can do one, you might as well double the fun and go for uh, multiple cannons on the high ground. No, nope, that's not going to happen. You went on the wrong side of town, Probe. He actually did manage to cancel that in time, though, which uh, is pretty good for him. Now, this becomes a situation where, oh, don't you dare let that pylon go down. Don't you dare let that happen. You can use your stalkers to kill it right now, Ghost X. Ghost X. Ghost X. Ghost X. Let's go, Ghost X. Let's go. Defense. Oh, he's got to go on the offense. You know, they always say the best offense is a good offense. That's a great saying. I love to live by it. And that's exactly what Ghost X. Nope, nope. They, they tend to say a good offense is a good defense. I think that's, uh, that, that's the lesson he learned from this. So he's got to try and back up right now. You can use your stalkers. Look at that. Oh, he figured it out. He can actually attack those. Don't need to run the Zelton. Don't need to run those Zelton. Really don't need to run the Zelton. But he's got to do it anyways because Buzz Bob, I guess. I don't know. He decides just to run in there. Does lose one Zelt, but is also preventing himself from losing his new main base, which is oddly enough placed at his natural, which is actually not becoming that odd in Bronze League Heroes anymore. I mean, Basically, in Bronze League Heroes, you just give up your main base if, if your opponent asks politely. You're, you're, you're one of those people who just can't say no. You're like, fine, go ahead and move in. That's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm doing completely fine sleeping on the floor. Don't worry about it. You go ahead and take the Master Suite. I'll sleep on the cold linoleum floor. It'll be great. You can take my main base. But uh, anyways, we do see the attack going to be moving out. I think this is actually enough to go ahead and break down the main base of Scabandari. Oh, how the tides have turned. Scabandari does have three gateways on the way. Uh, apparently in, the, in his new main base. I don't think he's going to be able to hold this off because he doesn't have enough cannons up here. There's only the one pylon. And oh, here he goes. He's got to run the ramp right now. There are three cannons. Is he going to go for it? Or does he back out? No, he's got to go straight for the pylon itself. Artosis pylon to the max. His entire base powered by one pylon. That takes a certain level of skill. And all of a sudden, the probe line is completely undefended. Does Scabandari have 400 minerals? Of course he does because it's Bronze League heroes. Uh, what did he just throw down that cut into that money? He just did something that cut into his money. Oh, more cannons, of course. Because if you're losing your main base, you... Oh, my God. He's actually going to break down into that natural. Hey, Ghost X taking a third base. Now, this is funny because this is normally how cannon rushes go versus Terran. Because they can just lift off and fly away. But Ghost X, he is fully committed right now. Uh, just got to go ahead and take his new main base, which happens to be his third he did run those probes away. I guess say overall workers killed is only three by Scabandari, and he is expanded to the Protoss player's main base. He is going to be able to kill off the cannon. Notice how he is focusing down the pylon with one of these cannons, so he's going to be able to burn down the Nexus with the cannons. That's what I'm trying to say. And uh, does look at the main base right now of Scabandari is now destroyed, but you also got to remember that... Uh, oh my god, does he only have one probe? Oh, I just realized that. He doesn't have enough money to make any probes, so he's going to have to individually mine with this one probe. This is the saving grace probe, the one and only probe. He cannot lose this probe. If he does, he will lose the game. But uh, now the nice thing is, is that his base is kind of like a jawbreaker. You, you got to get through all the layers to get to the Nexus. And right now it's going to be a layer of three cannons. There's three cannons over here, three more cannons. And then the next layer is even three additional cannons. So in order to kill this Nexus, you either need one Void Ray or a huge ground army. And I am going to assume that it is going to be a big ground army here as uh, it does look... Or even a Mothership Corp 
could slowly start to whittle us down. But uh, we'll have to see for now because, you know, Scavendari, he does now have uh, one pro mining. He's got to make a lot of trips here. Uh, what is it? He's got to make four, five, six trips so he can start making his first probe right here. He's at the 20 minerals. You can see this army is looking around. He wants to know where is that Nexus at? Where can I actually move out to make something happen? This one zealot over here, man, he has got his work cut out for him. Now, Ghost X, though, his income is looking great because he's actually able to hang on to his probes. Now, the good thing is that Scavendari will have enough energy to chrono boost out his single probe if he decides to. All right, little guy, you are the champion that Scavendari needs. There he goes. Make the probe, make the probe, make the probe. He needed so bad. What do you, What is he even focus? Oh, oh, he didn't even kill the pylon either. 11 HP right there. Loses his out. There's going to be the probe. There's the chrono boost. And where's the rally point? That is the real question. Come on, probe. Come on, probe. Where's the rally point? Where's the rally point? Oh. Wah, wah, wah. What is he even doing? I mean, his probe is literally just sitting there. Let's, let's take a look at uh, Scabandari cam. Uh, Scabandari. Hello. He's clicking on something. There he goes. He's up to 15. 15 APM. I, you got to be careful with APM that fast. You might get carpal tunnel just after one game, so you got to really watch out. Oh, second probe. Oh, can he make it? Yes, he does. Does he set the rally point? Yes. Oh, God. Things are looking up for Scabandari. He's up to two probes. He's got his rally point set, and that's really all that's going to be going on for him. But he does have a lot of cans. He also has his gateways, so eventually he'll have enough money to possibly make a zealot. I don't think he's mined any gas whatsoever. Nope, 2,500, 2,500 right there. And the units over here just chilling out. They're, uh, they, they still don't have enough to actually be able to bust up the ramp. The fact though, that Ghost X has this many gateways on one base is actually, oh my god, how many, how many gateways is this? Uh, well, six right now. He's got two more on the way, so eight gateways. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten gateways, excuse me. Ten warp gates off of one base. That is a true Bronze League hero champion. And he's going to be expanding on the back of this. So uh, Scavendari is actually going to have time to recover right now. He actually has enough to continually make probes at this point. So that's going to be good for him. And he does have that rally point set, which is great. All he has to do is focus on making those probes. Look at this. He's got another probe on the way. And he has seven out of 106 supply. I think that's the largest supply discrepancy at this point in the game that I've ever seen. So he doesn't need to make pylons anytime soon. He's good on pylons. He's good on cannons. Uh, not good on anything else, though. So we'll have to see if he can actually make this happen here as he is going to continue to mine. Oh, what's he going to throw down? Is he going to be a cyber next card? No, pro. What are you doing? What are you doing? Do not make another cannon. You better not make another cannon. I think you... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He is so addicted to cannons. I feel like we need to have an intervention right now. Uh, we need to sit Scavendari down and say, you know what? We love you, your family, but you are a cannon addict. You, you are so addicted to cannons. All you do is think about cannons. All you, You're a cannon hoarder. I mean, look at your own house. Look at how many cannons you have here. This is overkill. And what's the very first thing he throws down? Of course, it is going to be a forge. And... Uh, so we can make more cannons, man. I mean, why would you make anything else uh, 20 minutes into a PvP? I mean, there's really just no excuse for it. So uh, we'll have to wait and see if he actually... Oh, he throws down gas. The first gas of the game for him. He also has a Cybernetic score going to be on the way. We do have double robotics here for Ghost Dex. And I love that he's actually up to two bases. I guess he realized that 10 gateways and two robos, kind of hard to pay off on a one base salary. Oh, this might actually be it. He has so many gateway units, though. And uh, we'll have to wait and see. The cannon's trying to hold on, but I think there might actually be too much right now. This is a lot of zealots, a lot of sentry, and a lot of soccer. Because killing them with one air unit would be way too easy. And that is going to be, uh, I think that's going to be it. Oh my god, wait, wait. Uh, there we go. And he leaves the game. He realizes he has been outclassed. I want to go back really quick. Hang on, guys. This, this game is actually kind of a guilty pleasure of mine. As look at the amount of cannons, the dedication to Scavendari. You know, I gotta say, not many people are this dedicated to their job. And he, he cannon rushed like his life depended on it. There's gonna be one cannon, two cannons, three cannons. Uh, how many overall does he actually end up with? That's gonna be the real question. And honestly, this cannon rush seems a lot more scary when it's at times eight speed. Now, when it's at normal speed, it doesn't seem nearly quite as scary. My favorite part, I think, though, is that Ghost Tech still gave up his natural, even though all he had to do was leave one stalker here. But you know what? That that level of play 
is is just not seen in Bronze League Heroes. You have to be a Silver League player to be uh, to be that smart. Now you do have right here. Look at he still he goes for the counter attack, and then he loses his new main base to Cadiz. He runs. <laughs> I also love how he runs them away right away. He's just like, you know what? Screw this. I, I'm not even going to bother. All right, so those three cannons finished. How many cannons are we up to total? Uh, 18 cannons. Wait, wait. He's losing cannons back at home. But he was up at 18, 19 cannons there for just a moment. Scavendari, you may not have won, but you have won all of our hearts. So thank you guys for submitting your replays. You can send them to huskyreplays at gmail.com. My good friend Sinvicta, I'll put his link down below. He's the one who actually sorts through them, so go give him lots of love. He is uh, he's basically the one who brings you Bronze League heroes. I may be the voice behind it, but be strong behind every strong voice is a strong independent black woman known as Sinvicta. He'll uh, he'll thank me for that a little bit later. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Remember guys, StarCraft is meant to be fun. Do not get stressed out. Go have some fun. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time. Hello everyone, this is HGS Gatsky here, back with another Bronze League Heroes! Someday I'm going to go to the Grand Canyon, man, and just yell that at the top of my lungs. Let's go ahead and introduce our players right now. Up in the top left side is going to be our Red Terran player, Mol Molasson. Molasson, our spelled backwards is Nazilum. N Nazilum, backwards. And his opponent down the bottom right side, it is going to be Ibuprofen! All right, that drug you take, you know, anytime you're feeling bad, you're like, I'll just take an ibuprofen, it'll be fine. So we got ibuprofen down in the bottom right side. So it is going to be a classic TBZ, and by classic, I mean, okay, I was going to say, there he goes. He's finally building the Overlord. Anyways, for those of you who do not know, the whole point of Bronze League Heroes is, uh, number one, to have fun, number two, to laugh a lot, and number three, to watch the very best of the very worst. The games may not be good, the players may not be good, but my god, it is so good. But uh, anyways, Bronze League Heroes, of course, one of my favorite series so far. Uh, just so you know, I think the majority of you do know this, but uh, if you're a Bronze League Heroes fan, there is, of course, a Bronze League Heroes playlist. The only reason I mention that is because they are going to be redesigning the YouTube, uh, not the homepage, but each channel that you will visit is getting completely redesigned in about seven days. It's like seven or five or something days. Anyways, it's really, really soon. By the time you watch this, it may have already happened. So uh, just keep an eye out there because they're changing how everything works. Playlists work a little bit differently. The YouTube main page works a little bit differently. So just keep an eye out. The Zerg right there for Ibuprofen. Got to go ahead and steal this gas right now. We do have the SCV here for Molasson. Malaysian? M Molasson. Molasson. I think Molasson is going to be the best way to say that name. SCV is going to scout down here. Now remember, the thing about Bronze League Hero Scouts is 99% of the time they scout, and then they don't know what they see or how to react. So always try and pay attention to your scout. Don't pay him too much mind. Wait, wait, did, did something die here? Or did this SCV just randomly stop building the depot? All right, there we go. Got the SCV back on the depot. Must have been the scouting SCV who threw that down. So basically what Mollison, uh, I'll get it right one of these times. Basically what Mollison saw was early gas and a spawning pool. Now that tells you one of two things. Eh, one of three things we'll go with. Number one, early roaches. Number two, regular time zergling speed. Number three, banelings. So we'll see which one it actually happens to be. Oh, double overlord there. <laughs> Says those overlords as uh, two of them spawn a little bit early. But that's fine because it's Bronze League heroes. And is it going to be zergling speed, metabolic boost, anybody? That actually sounds kind of like a, a drink that you would order at a bar. Surely someone has made the metabolic boost at some point. Or maybe it's like one of those like five-hour energy drinks. But instead of five hours, it's 24 hours. And then everyone who takes it dies, and then they have to... Anyways, metabolic boost. It can't be worse than the five-hour energy drink commercials, though. Let's be completely honest about that. Uh, especially that new one. You know, we drink over two billion cups of coffee a day without a second thought. And I'm like, no, people think about coffee all the time. This commercial is already wrong. Anyways, we got the Zerglings moving out. It is going to be a Baneling Nest on the way. Of course, there's like no drones on uh, mining right now. But it does look like a queen is done. Does know how to inject larva. We're all very impressed with that. Uh, the six lings are going to be moving out. Six more are on the way. And again, the SCV is going to be scouting this. Gets actually a ridiculous scout on. He's going to even see the Baneling Nest. Does he click on it? Uh, no. No, he doesn't. He does attack his own hatchery with the queen there for a couple of shots. The SCV does get taken out. So he spotted the Baneling Nest. Spotted the one base play. Spotted the early Zerglings. 
and he expands. So that is when you know that the scouting went wow right over his head uh, because this base is going to be completely susceptible to an attack. He only still has one barracks. He Oh, no, he has a second barracks. Excuse me. I misread the situation. Uh, almost as bad as Malaysian lot misread the situation. The links right now, though, they do have Zergling Speed, are going to be able to delay. Where are these Marines going? All right, there we go. They're going to go ahead and back up. These guys are so dead, though. They're going to try and make it back into the main base for now. It does look like Ibuprofen deciding not to press his advantage just yet. He does have lots of links on the way, though. Could easily expand on the back of this, but who am I kidding? Bronze League heroes are one base every day. Uh, one base all day, every day. Anyways, he is going to go ahead and switch it up into a three barracks and a factory play now. So, realizing that expanding not an option. Here comes the Banelings, baby. This is going to be an old school Baneling bus right here about to take place. So, there they go. Going to be running right up that ramp. And unfortunately for uh, Mollison, there's nothing here to defend this. Banelings right there going to be able to detonate there. Oh, God, there was just enough to kill the Marines, too. And here comes the Zergling. He's going to be running directly into the main base. Now, uh, I oh, with the offensive GG. Oh, Ivan Profit pretty confident right now. And I got to say, his confidence is not unwarranted because in an average game, this would be over. However, this is Bronze League Heroes, so I have no idea what the hell is going to happen. We do have a factory finish, though. Uh, Mollison, I believe, has lowered the supply down to one. No, excuse me, three. There are two SCVs and one Marine remaining, and Nudgeb! Oh man, the, the hard-hitting insults coming from Mollison. You Nudgeb! Nudgeb! Oh god, it just, it, it's, maybe it sounds cooler when you type it out. Not so good in person. Uh, like, don't talk to me like that, you're such a Nudgeb! And another SCV goes down to so the current supply! <laughs> the current supply is 26 to 1! One, nope, 26 to 2 right there as Mollison has managed to bring that. Nope, it's back down to 1. And we're back down to 1. There's the cancel. I believe that was a barracks that was on the way. Banelings on the. What? Okay, he morphed them into Banelings to kill the supply depot, which is serving absolutely no purpose right now. And we have a mad rat race over here of the command center and the barracks. Currently, one supply to 24 here as Mollison is going to be throwing down a barracks here. I don't know if this is a wall-in or I don't know kind of what's going on. Nub, nub, nub! I also like how there's two spaces right there. He thought I wouldn't notice, but I did. I don't know how many spaces are after it, though. That That is a mystery. So nub, nub, nub from Ibuprofen. Uh, man, we're going to need some Ibuprofen for that burn. Anybody? Was that funny to anybody or just me? Anyways, we do have the Banelings now morphing in. Uh, six Banelings going to be on the way. I believe, if I can count correctly, this game is so hilarious, I may be counting incorrectly. Yep, six are on the way. The Marine has been canceled. The uh, orbital up here just going to be floating around. Keep in mind that Mollison does have the ability to expand. I don't even know if you can call it an expansion, but here come the Banelings right now with the one Zergling there. He's like, don't worry, guys, you got this. I also love how he always makes Banelings to run them into buildings that have no units defending them, and he could just use the Zerglings there to attack them. Pro tip of the day! Burn! Burn! Oh, we really do need some ibuprofen for that burn. Quick, this barracks needs some ibuprofen. Hang on, we're trying to do the camera here correctly as it is slowly going to burn down. Although, in Mollison's defense, he is now up to four supply. Now, some of that is in Marines that are currently building, but they are going to be building down on the bottom left side. Ibuprofen is now up to layer tech. What, what, uh, say bye to Rax. All right. <laughs> All right, we'll say, we'll say bye. Ibuprofen, being the true Bronze League hero that he is, is not going to scout around the map because he thinks that this is the only thing going on. All right, well, we got to all listen to Ibuprofen, everyone. Uh, it'll be like Happy New Year's. 15, 12, 8, Happy New Year. Goodbye, Rax. All right, there it is. The links right there are like, okay, well, now now what? Now what? Uh, Ibuprofen, do you think we should scout around? Nah. All right, Mollison is back in this. He's slowly closing that supply gap. Seven supply now to 30 at the 11-minute mark. The Zerglings right now going to be moving out here. Now, you can see that Ibuprofen, he almost has a good thought. He's got to be scouting around at all these bases, make sure that there's nothing hidden here. Unfortunately for him... There is, and his good idea is not very well flushed out. We do have an engine. 
an engineering bay out of the way for Boston, because why the hell not? Just throw it down. Now, we do have the good old one base spire with nine drones on minerals and three drones on gas. Can't really make that many mutas off that kind of income. But, hey, this is uh, nub alerts. Whoa! Whoa! Nub alert. I think that's going a little bit far, because he must have had the nub dar targeted at himself. Am I right, am I right guys? All right, well, you know, as a, as a true bronzy hero, when he can't find any buildings to kill, he is going to senselessly murder some destructible debris. So that's what he's doing right there. He should be able to win that. Uh-oh, uh-oh, the secret base has been spotted. Of course the engineering bay was for a planetary fortress. How could I forget? I think even the mules are going to survive for now because the planetary fortress is here. They're so OP at bronzy heroes. Oh, God, cleans those up right away. Blasts those Zerg away. That planetary forge is already up to five kills. All of a sudden, Ibuprofen realizing he's going up against an actual base. Got to be running more Zerg to there. Don't you dare do it. Whoa, got some distance on that one. Oh, my. What were you hoping to accomplish with that? What was what was that? I don't know what that was, but here comes more Bailey right now. Can he make it happen? The Breeze got to try and not micro away. And there they... <laughs> All right, well, it turns out three Banelings, not enough to kill a planetary fortress. So that's going to be chilling there. We do have the command center over here, which I believe is not landed correctly. But, hey, he's mining at least on the three closest mineral patches. So that's going to be good. And uh, Malazan, Mollison taking a huge hit there to his supply. Now back down to seven. Should be up to eight here pretty soon. Yeah, he's got another Marine on the way. So nice and easy there. Oh, I have a problem with yet a another GG as he's really confident about these 22 Zerglings because the last ones worked out so well. So Ibuprofen, man, I I don't even know what other medicine puns I can do. He's prescribed some insults. I, I, that's not even a good joke because Ibuprofen's over the counter. So I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. It does look at the Zerglings right now. They're going to be scouting out. There is that base, of course, in the top left side. So keep in mind that Ibuprofen has had a supply lead for about as many minutes as there are in the game. So I think he should be just fine here. Does find an exposed uh, supply depot with the planetary. Is that. Is that what. Is that what. Me? Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. There's one mutilist. The one is the loneliest of that there ever was. The two is a number that you'll never see. A uh, bow, 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 and bronzy heroes. There's the Mr. Turn and the Marine. Get the Muta out of there, and the Muta has perished. As the Mr. right there, and you know, you know what, Mollison, don't even worry about missile turrets. He, wait, wait, wait. The plot thickens. Ibuprofen is actually making two mutalisks now. Ibuprofen throwing out another comedic nub. Because if there's nothing that will strike terror in your opponent after you completely fail four attacks, it is insulting them from afar. And it does look right there. The Marine will get taken out. A valiant effort there, Mr. Marine. But uh, Mollison is standing strong with his four mining SCVs. He does now have a factory on the way. He has finally cut into that money a little bit. Uh, Ibuprofen realizing that one gas muta, not as effective as it is in MLG or GSL. I guess no one ever does it, but still, one gas muta not really working out for him. He does have those two mutas now. Spending all of his gas on more banelings, not nearly enough here to actually be able to take out the planetary, though the planetary is still at 1,359. 1,359 HP. Uh, well, how much does a baneling do? Let's take a little gander here. Uh, 20 damage. All right. Uh, I don't think it's going to be enough. It, it is 80 damage to structures, to be fair. But uh, I don't think that that is going to be nearly enough, guys. I just don't think it's going to be enough. It's one of those situations where a commentator is like, but will it be enough? The answer is no. Although we do have a couple more banelings on the way, so maybe it will be enough. I don't think so, though. The math just does not add up here. Keeping in mind that this base on the top left side is still mining. I, I will just say it is at full capacity, even though it's not, just because it's Bronze League Heroes and we haven't seen more than, like, seven workers on a mineral patch this entire time. But here we go. Ibuprofen's gearing up for an attack. He's got his lings in position. The one ling is going to be moving out. Now, does this ling have the command to run all the way up to the top left side? Because if he does spot that, it will be even amounts of bases. The two mutas right here were like, hey, whatever happened to that other mutalisk? And he's like, I don't know, man. I'm sure he was well taken care of. I heard he retired. Well, you heard incorrectly. That is what we call propaganda. One Marine right there doing a cartwheel. 
And the Bailings right there, they're trying to decide. Oh, God, is this another Marine? Yep, got, oh, oh my God, that was the world's biggest Marine. Here comes the Bailings right there. What? 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 Turns out that that is not enough. That one Marine did get taken out, but my God, he survived for a little. What do you? <laughs> what do you think is gonna happen when you run into two Zerglings to a planetary? I don't know what your expectations are. You definitely have to lower your expectations in those kind of situations. Now we do have a starport with a reactor on it. I'm trying to think of what this could be for. I mean, the only two options are gonna be for a medevac or a Viking or one apiece at a time, but other than that, I mean, he can't even really afford this. How many SCVs does he have on gas? Uh, where is his gas? He's mining uh, four SCVs on one gas. Four out of three. Not bad, uh, but that's all he's got. So we do have Hellbats now going to be out for Mollison. This is why we love Bronze League Heroes here. Oh, oh, the two Muta Hit Squad now going to be moving out right here. Now, uh, remember that Ibuprofen is the one saying that uh, that Mollison is the noob. So two mutilist timing here at the 20 minute mark is actually what the pros do. You want to focus down the reactor first, completely ignore, uh, he, yeah, he's going to go for the starport. You know, he, he can't let those medevacs get out. He's got to focus that down. Uh, decides not to go for, oh, he's got, nope, he's not going to go for the workers. He really wants to kill that starport. You know, I heard that Ibuprofen's parents were killed by a starport, and that is why he is so fixated on, uh, on killing the top. Now he's going to go for the depot. Now he's, nope, nope. Mm, okay, now he finally goes to the SCVs there. And, oh, look at that sweet Gosu Micro trying to take out those SCVs. He will actually manage to get them there. So good job on him focusing on that. And as a positive, since he's so focused on his Micro, he now has uh, about 2,500 resources in the bank. So that's uh, that's some good money there. We got a scan in the main base. He, really, Mollison, though, he is he is going to stick to that starport play, and it is indeed going to be for a medevac. The command center is going to go down. That poor orbital did not stand a chance. The base up on the top left side has finally been cleared out. Mollison, though, always the inventive type, going to be expanding up on the top right side. Keep in mind that even now, 22 minutes into the game, Mollison is still behind in supply. Now. He is catching up a little bit. He's got Medivacs on the way. He's made Widow Mines. He's got Hellbats. These are all relatively cheap units to get high supply on. So that's a good way to raise your supply quickly. But I don't know if that's still going to be enough. I will say Ibuprofen now getting a little bit worried realizing that maybe he's not, you know, 10 bases up on his opponent like he's acting. Considering that he's been on one base the whole time. That makes sense. But regardless, the Queen here is on full energy as well. Probably my favorite part about this. And uh, three spines are now done as uh, Ibuprofen is weathering the storm. We're currently tied in supply here. The Lings right there are absorbing some of the shots. That's actually a good play there. You do not want those uh, destroying you when you go to run down there. The Zergling count is super high here. Uh, might actually have enough to engage us directly as long as he watches out for those Widow Mines. Watch out for that. All right, so our Zerg player does have a lot of gas. I'm kind of curious to see exactly what he spins out. I like that, absorbing those shots uh, with the Lings. That's exactly what you want to do with Zerg. Then runs another one down there, realizes that the uh, Widow Mines are pretty much cleared out. The Hellbat Marine composition, though, is going to be relatively strong. Oh, God, is he going to spend all of his money on... Whoa! Whoa, whoa, whoa. All these Banelings, 38 Banelings on the way. I, I super hope he does not run them into the, the base right now because the Widow Mines are in a pretty good spot, but the Hellbats especially are in a good choke point to absorb a lot of damage. Oh, God. Oh, God. No, don't you do it. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no, there's another Widow Mines. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. What you do? Oh, God. I got to I'm sorry. Ooh, I had to, I had to take off the headset there for a second. What is going on with this mini map? There's now a. <laughs> I'm Roman. Oh my god, I'm gonna cry. All right, so I'm Roman expanding to the main base of Mollison now, as uh, apparently 38 widow mines or 38 bailings versus two widow mines uh, doesn't quite work out very well. Who would have thought? Oh my god. Oh, can we please just have a breather for a minute? Can we please just think about what happened? Look, that SCB flexing right there. He has earned it. Mollison is now ahead in supply for the first time, I think, this entire game. He's actually in a spot to win it now. Our Zerg player is up to five Mutalists. Oh, my God. 
He knows how to macro like a boss. He does have the expansion up here as well. Does he make drones? What's he going to make? All right, three drones on the way. So we may be seeing this game finally transition into the mid game. Now that we've been at the 26 minute mark, I think it's now, uh, now is a good time to say it's the mid game. Normally mid game happens at around like the eight to 10 minute mark. No, 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 not in Bronze League Heroes. The game is perpetually in the early game. And uh, wh which drone got told to build this? Uh, oh God. Oh God, so the drones that are all the way across the map are being told to run up there. Is, is Mollison gonna actually expand right here? Is this, is this actually going to happen? His planetary up here is ready to go. No kills on that planetary right now. We do have the three drones. We have the queen as well. The lings here are ready to rumble. The medalist here as well going to be able to kill off that widow mine. Is it going to burrow in time? Not today. So this is actually anyone's game right now because Ibuprofen has a little bit of money in the bank. He's got an expansion going now. And uh, those drones have transferred all the way up there. And he has been told to build an extractor like a long time ago. So right now, Ibuprofen can be taking that. Oh, the Zergling's trying to run in. Turns out that that still is a bad idea. Oh, God. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. He's got to go for the barracks and the destructible rocks. And he targeted the factory. He literally, in that moment, targeted the factory in the heat of the moment. He's like, all right. I could kill off these hellbats. I could kill off these marines. But God damn it, I want to kill that factory. All right, so we targeted the factory there. Not quite sure what he expected to happen. The planetary up in the top right side is good to go. Uh, still chilling out. Ibuprofen, though, he's actually got drones mining off of... Oh, it's still two geysers. I got really excited because I thought it was three geysers. No, it's two because the other one ran out because he's been mining from it for so long. Oh, got to clear my sinuses. This game has been making me cry too much. Now, I believe that he has lost the Mutalisk. He's now down to four. There is a sweet spot where he can attack right about here. He's got to watch out for the missile turret. Got to watch out for the missile turret, bro. You got to get away from the missile turret. This is not a time to be a hero. And boom goes the dynamite. Oh, God, the Mutas. Mutas, get out of there. Another Mutalist falls and almost loses the other one. I think, I think by God, Mollison has it. I mean, I've broken. He is getting money from this base. He's almost mined out because it was a main player's base over there. But, uh, I, oh, God, did he just lose those other Mutas? Uh, yes. Yes, he did. 19 drones, 8 overlords aren't going to save you now, bro. Mollison is poised to take this game. 26 lings are on the way. These drones should probably transfer all the way across the map. You can see he has them selected right now. So he's thinking really hard about what he wants to do. He's like, all right, what are my options here? What are my options? All right, my options are to send out one drone. And what what's, what is this drone's command? Oh, little bite right there. What is this drone's command? Like, where is he going with this? Uh... Drone, what are you doing? What are you doing, buddy? I don't know what he's doing. I don't know where he's going. But this is this is the command he thinks is going to win him the game right now. So let's go ahead and see what this drone is up to. Is he going to just run into that planetary fortress? I really hope he just runs into that planetary fortress. No, it looks like he's not going to. God, this is... Did he transfer one drone? He transferred one drone all the way across the map when he has, like, this many on one mineral patch. All right, good job, drone. Welcome to your new home. Uh, all right, so that was the most anticlimactic thing ever. It does look like he will be able to kill off yet another orbital here. Hopefully this does not make Mollison lose hope because he's got this. He is the Terran's last hope. They should make a, a blockbuster movie out of this story because it is great. It, it would be the romantic comedy of the year. But uh, anyways, if you have this army getting moving up here, three spine crawlers in position. They're finally going to flex their nuts. Is it going to be enough here to hold this up? I don't think so. Can't even kill the Hellbat because Hellbats are so strong. And, uh, oh, he leaves the game. He just leaves the game. He doesn't use ATG. Oh, my God. That is like one of my favorite Bronze League heroes I think I've ever seen. A big thanks to my friend Sinvicta. He's the one who sorts through these. He is the champion that esports needs. I'll put his link down below. Go go, give him a thanks. Tell him thank you for the ibuprofen. And uh, where was that bailing attack? I, I honestly don't remember what timing it was. At. I think it was before. Or was it after this? I, mean, I, I honestly don't remember where it was. So we're going to have to we're just gonna have to speed through. All right. Was it these ones? Are these the, the secret bailings? No, no, no. It was, it was before. Wait, wait. Let's see. Here we go. Oh, yeah. These are the factory ones. These are the epic fail factory. Look at this. He does that. And then he literally he clicks on the factory. And the fact he takes like no damage, we gotta go before this. I, I love how him losing all the banelings originally like wasn't even the thing that ended it. All right, I don't think it was these ones. Nope, it was way past this. So we're, we're just gonna speed it up. These banelings go in there. 
They hit the planetary. They almost killed the planetary, but of course it wasn't enough, as we uh, later realized. And this is where the epic hilarity unfolds in just a moment here. Once the, once the base of the top left side actually ends up dying, that is that we'll, we'll just watch it in slow motion. Two widow mines to rule them all. All right, so he has all these lings right here, uh, which would have probably served him better in ling form, but he decides, nope, nope, it is time for it. And look how many he has. Let, let's take a look here. 51 zerglings. He turns almost all of them into badelings. Here we go. There we go. <laughs> oh, even with the snort. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right, we got the widow mine. Boom! Takes out half of them. And you boom. <laughs> Literally had to walk away from the computer on that one. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching Bronze League Heroes. Uh, you are the very best. I hope you guys enjoy it, because if you didn't, then you don't enjoy fun. I'm sorry. This game was the best, and I'll see you guys next time. Oh, my God. These are going to kill me. Hello, everyone. This is HS Yes here, and it is time for another Bronze League Hero. Ran out of energy there towards the end. Anyways, it is time to cast the very best of the very worst. Of course, the whole point of Bronze League Heroes is to have a laugh and have some fun, and of course, encourage everyone to go play some more StarCraft. Let's go ahead and introduce our players up in the top left side as the Red Terran. As the man with three daggers by his command center, it is going to be Tekra's Ghost. And, of course, his name is on all caps, which means you have to yell his name every time you say it. And his opponent, down in the bottom right side. He's got a boring logo here. No daggers for him. It is going to be the guild list. Narinor. Narinor. Or backwards is Ronorin. Ronorin? Anyways, it is going to be Narinor versus Ghost, a TBT. I, I've been feeling bad, guys. There haven't been many Terran games lately on my channel, so the last couple I've done have been Terran. We'll be back to the normal groove of things very, very soon. So if you're having Terran Overlord right now, uh, Terran Overlord, Terran Overload right now, that's when you know you've been playing too much StarCraft is you start replacing actual words with words from StarCraft. Uh, it's like, hey, babe, I'm not going to force field you to do anything you don't want to. I don't, I don't know, I have, a, I have not very good examples, but uh, anyways, I'm actually super excited right now to be casting some Bronze League Heroes. It's been about a week, I think, since my last game. Even if it hasn't been a week, it sure feels like it, and I I couldn't be more excited. Of course, Bronze League Heroes, one of my favorite series to be doing. You guys have been enjoying it quite a bit. I actually get lots of feedback on Bronze League Heroes, so I appreciate everyone who uh, leaves feedback, leaves support, or leaves, if you aren't supportive, then let me know why. I love people who uh, are honest. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Well, you can tell me. It's uh, it's one of those weird things where I actually enjoy YouTube comments. Um, you, you hear about all these posts on Reddit, all these things that people talk about, about how they hate, how they absolutely hate YouTube comments. I actually get a kick out of them. I feel like if you treat your viewers with respect, uh, most of them will treat you the same, which is a good thing. Oh, Naranor, what are you up to, buddy? This STV is definitely not scouting, and he sure as hell ain't building a refinery there. If he would, that would actually be hilarious. It's got to be a proxy factory right now. Now, the positioning of this is quite peculiar because if he's trying to proxy Widow Mines or Hellions or Siege Tanks or something, you would think that it would be kind of placed maybe back here, maybe kind of down here, really somewhere that's going to be really close. But look how far this is away. So if he makes a ground unit out of here, keep in mind that all units out of the factory are ground units, it is going to have to run all the way around up here around the corner and over to the ramp. At that point, it might as well not even be proxied. So my guess is that it is going to be some sort of proxy drop. I have a feeling it's going to be a starport right after this. We'll just have to wait and see. Tekra goes, so he's playing pretty standard for Bronze League Heroes. He's got his uh, second barracks on the way. He's already got his reactor, got the Marines queued up and ready to go. Factory is uh, going to be following up on the back of that, which is totally fine. All right, there's going to be the react. Oh, oh, it's not a reactor. It is actually a tech lab, because in Bronze League Heroes, you can't build the building you want on your first try, so you got to go ahead and cancel that, and throws down the tech lab. What is going to be... Oh, my God, is this going to be a proxy Thor? 
Is this going to be a proxy Thor? Because he's got the armory on the way already, and that to me is the only thing that makes sense. Not that anything in Bronze League Hero makes sense, but uh, we do have a starboard. I think he's going to do a proxy Thor drop. That is my prediction. I mean, who knows what the hell is actually going to come out of here. But my guess is going to be a proxy Thor drop, which I am A-OK -okay with. That is absolutely a fact. Right now, though, Ghost, I don't know if he's going to be A-OK -okay with it because he's only got Marines on the way. He does have Stim Pack which should help out in dealing with these Thor drops. But uh, we'll have to wait and see as, first of all, if a Thor even comes out of there. Second of all, what is Ghost going to be making with this factory? That is the real question of the hour. Starport is done, and we should be seeing something come out here. Oh, my God, please be a Thor. Please be a Thor. Yes, it is a Thor. This has got to be a medevac. Yes. Oh, God, it's got to be the proxy Thor drop. A build, which was never good, but I still have not seen it in ages. It is a very fun build to watch indeed. Actually, a lot of the uh, GSL Code S type players were using Thor drops not all that long ago. So definitely watch out for them. The thing that's strong about him is if you can bring SCVs with them, it's almost like they just never die. And Mass Marine not going to really be the best here. The Thor can basically just one-shot those guys. So we'll have to wait and see if the, the amount of Marines here is going to be enough. I think Stim Pack will be done right around when he's going to need it. He might have a couple of seconds there where he doesn't have it. Unfortunately, Hellion's on the way out of the uh, factory here, which isn't going to really help versus the Thor. But the first medevac is done. Oh my god, he's actually adding on a tech lab as well. Is this going to turn into a proxy Raven or proxy Banshee? Well, I can't wait to find out. But here's going to be the medevac right now. And the Thor is ready to go. He's like, Thor, it's you. Uh, medevac, you're going to pick me up. Medevac, are you there? We get the thumbs up from the medevac. So we are good to go. And the Thor drop has commenced. Apparently this hits at around the seven minute mark. Drops the Thor in the most worthless position possible. It does look like the Hellions and Marines going to be moving over here. Goodbye, Hellions. It was nice knowing you. And the Marines are going to attempt to take this out. I think there are enough Marines to eventually kill us off but the Thor every time it shoots it is going to kill off another marine so so far so good as far as the units lost tab is there still the SCV up here to repair him yes there is that Thor right there having one hell of a fun time it's like that mission in the campaign where you're piloting the Thor man uh, and with Tychus you're basically killing off everything we do have a command center on the way for Ghost and cloaking on the way for Naranor. So we are going to be seeing, I would assume, Banshees. Unless they uh, unless they gave Medivac's cloaking ability now, then I think we are going to be seeing Banshees on the way. Oh my god, can you imagine Medivacs that are cloaked? All of a sudden, it's just spawning units randomly in your base. You can't tell where they're coming from. But another command center for Naranor on the way. So both players are actually looking to sort of expand here. But you can see that ghost right here. I mean, he just is now starting his combat shield. So, oh god, it's a double Thor drop. As if one wasn't bad enough. Here comes two. And they are fully repaired as well. SCVs are actually going to escape there. Several kills have been thrown out, though. Siege tank will be in position and barely doing a little bit of splash damage here because Thors are so wide. And got to be careful with the Thors. No, one Thor's got to go down. No, he saves it at the last second. The medevac, though, that one's got to fall. A little bit of a miss micro there. Uses the boost ability and is able to escape. But uh, did delay mining there for quite some time. Let's take a look here at the units tab right now. 28 SCVs to 24. So really all that did was even it out a little bit. Not even all that much. We do have the command center now on the way into an orbital. Uh, both players upgrading to an orbital? Nope, not quite yet. Naranor still needs a little bit of time to complete his. Looks like the factory is piecing the hell out of here. I love how he's just lifting out the factory. He's like, yeah, I'm not going to make any more Thors. So he's going to lift that off, go ahead and fly it home. He is going to be repairing this Thor. This is the Thor who has seen some things. He's seen two battles so far and survived, which is more than most units in StarCraft can actually say. Let's be honest, most units die in their first battle. That is just, that is the world we live in, man. But it does look like here that uh, he could continue to do the drops if he wants. Needs to repair up the medevac as well. I would highly recommend that. However, going on 10 minutes, neither player has expanded. Ghost is working towards it. He's going to go ahead and land at that command center right there. And more barracks on the way. So it looks like Naranor may decide to make some actual units as opposed to Cheeky Thor's dropped in medevacs. However, he's uh, he is going to be going for several more Banshees. They do have the cloak now and really just kind of commit to this Banshee tech. It does look like right now. And I got to admit that Ghost, while he does have another command center, he does not really have that much detection. I mean, we don't see a Raven. We don't see missile turrets coming out. We don't really have a whole lot to detect these Banshees. So if he's able to micro against those scans, should be more than okay. But uh, it does look like another command center for Naranor are going to be coming up. So he went from this wonky proxy uh, Thor to three command centers inside of his main base. Lots of idle workers just chilling out. But really, I mean, I feel like, you know, the workers of pro gamers are 
they're always working so hard that the workers for the average gamer, I mean, that's when they're taking a break. I feel like, you know, all these units were recently in an MVP game, and they are exhausted, man. They got to take a break, and that's, uh, I got to say, oh, looks like the attack over here is going to be happening with these Banshees. Three kills and five kills apiece so far. Can the Bronze League level micro save him today? And who am I referencing? Well, it's either player at this point. The Widowmine is going to be in position here to help defend against that. If he scans it, he can take one of those Banshees out. The Banshees do have 140 HP with no armor. Guess what? 125 damage there. Uh, it does additional damage versus shields, but of course, Banshees don't have shields. It does look like the army for Ghost has moved out. It is awkwardly placed down here in the south. We'll see if we can actually manage to move in there. As the two Banshees actually find a sweet spot up here, the one worker over there is like, oh god, just keep mining, just keep mining. Doing its uh, Finding Nemo status, man. Oh, that SCV, wrong side attack. Almost actually starts the bunker there before deciding, nope, that's not a good idea. This guy catches wind of what's going to be going on. He turns around, but all of a sudden, man, Tekra Ghost, he's got uh, Nar Naranor, Naranor, Nariner. Nar Nariner, that sounds like a great name to call him. Uh, apparently attacking the command center itself. There we go, gonna finally start going for the workers here. Marines stimming and trying to run over. Combat shields though, after the one stem, still not enough to save them from just two shots there. So manages to take those out. We are now up to four kills and five kills. It looks like he's gonna continue to climb here on this Banshee. At the same time though, Ghost is able to contain him. So the supplies are still favoring Ghost because Ghost actually has another base. He's had more workers this entire time. It does look like things are about to change though. At this rate, the Banshee's alone, just cleaning house. There's one scan. How do you actually take that out? I guess the Widow Mine finally finished him off here. But uh, even with the scan, there's just not enough units here to finish the job. It looks like the SCVs may all get taken out. So many SCVs got to be going down here. So the income from Ghost here is essentially at zero because he's not mining over here and he's got no SCVs left. So that's not really going to be helping him out right now. Taking a look at the units tab, it is four SCVs to 30. So basically at this point, Ghost has got to make it work with these Marines, Hellions, and Siege Tanks. I mean, his own Siege Tanks are in a great spot here. But the problem is is that Naranor is actually going to be mining right now. So we've got 800 minerals, 30 harvesters compared to the four, and those four harvesters are not doing jack diddly. Oh my god, these Banshees are still going to town. 19 kills on this one. Enough energy for cloaking. Does he use it? Yes, he does at the last moment, but a big scan is going to be able to kill off that Banshee. Unfortunately, that Banshee is already out of energy, so that's not really going to be helping him out here. And this one, oh, another scan, and it survives, albeit barely. Somehow the Widow Mine deciding no, I'm not going to kill it off. I'm going to make his life miserable here. But, uh, you know, the one thing that Ghost has to watch out for, aside from everything, because he just lost all of his stuff, but another thing he has to watch out for is the fact that his army is chilling out over here, but Naranor is still making units on the back of this. That's going to be the big difference, is that the mining is actually taking place. The Banshee does get taken out. It is now a smoldering heap of metal over there. And we also have Marine and Marauder going to be trying, or excuse me, just Marine and Siege Tank. He does stim, he's got Ruth Ram. There's no Siege Tanks up here to actually prevent this from happening. So the only splash damage is coming from the friendly fire off the Siege Tank. Got to be breaking down the front door of the Thor over here who has seen some stuff. He's only at 10 kills, which is not going to be enough to hold off this army. He's got to get a lot more. Micro's the one Marine there to try and save the SCVs. Could pull off the line to repair the Thor, but now decides to let that fall. So it does leave the Siege Tanks out of position. All the production's got to be taken out here for Narano. He's got to lift off these commanders. He does have another one up here at the north. Lots of mules going to be dropping down there, but guess what? He's not able to spend his money. He's at 2,800 minerals here, which means that he can't produce anything. He's not producing anything. He's got to build SCVs over here to start building up his infrastructure. It looks like the Vikings might spot this expansion, but not quite yet. It does look like the Marines not going to be moving down here to the bottom right side. Can he actually take out the entire base? I don't actually know what's happening right now. It's not really a base race, but the base of Ghost has been dead for quite some time. It looks like the one Banshee here just kind of go to town. The Widow Mine will activate on this Banshee, I believe. Not enough to kill it off, though. Only 15 HP remains on that Banshee. And right now, all the SCV is going to get taken out. That's going to even up the SCV count substantially. It is currently one SCV to three. One to three. So uh, I guess three times the amount of SCVs right now for Naranor. We'll have to see, though, can he sustain that huge economic lead that he has? Current income is zero for both players. Should probably lift off the command center before he gets in the red. He's just sitting here targeting the Widowmine. He knows it's going to kill off the Banshee, 
but this command center did get in the red already so that means that he has to repair that up or he's going to end up losing it doesn't even have any scvs uh yep he's got the one but only 90 minerals that's not enough to get out of the red at this point another banshee coming up here actually going to be able to kill off this orbital command if he doesn't lift it off i think it's going to get taken out a command center over here is going to get taken out there's one floating at the top right side and he still has these buildings on the left side naranor at only eight supply to 40 supply right now i feel like ghost should have this but what is his supply uh, mostly of 23 Marines, two Sea Tanks, a Hellion, and three Vikings, and a Widow Mine. I don't see how he can possibly lose this right now versus just the two Banshees, especially since he does have the Orbital Command right here. But the thing you got to remember is that Naranor not going to go down without a fight. He's got 4,675 minerals. He can build like a hundred bajillion command centers. So far, though, he decides to spend that time building supply depots. And uh, I guess they're going to come out handy. There it goes. You think he would expand, but he has so much money now. He doesn't even need to expand. He just needs to build more supply depots. We do have the two banshees over here in the top left side. Going to be able to take this out. Where is the big army at? He's trying to spot where these buildings are. Because keep in mind, he doesn't know exactly where he is at just yet because the orbital command is still alive over here. Oh, God. He thinks that this is the last building. I think he's going to avoid this expansion, if you could call it that, as he still has not spotted these buildings even after all of these years and you may be saying husky it has not been years keep in mind in starcraft man two minutes is a year that is what it feels like but does like this army game moving out to the top right side he thinks that this is the last building the hellion here saying hey guys let's burn him down and indeed that is what's going to happen here the marines do stem to run over here did he stem on all of them I believe that he did, uh, yeah, yeah, he stemmed them all down, so he's got to be able to take out the orbital, but guess what, the Banshee count is now up to three, there's going to be a fourth one on the way, this orbital needs to lift the orbital, lift the orbital, lift the orbital, lift the orbital, oh my god, he needs to lift it so bad, it's his last uh, orbital command, he's not going to have enough to build anything else, lift it up, lift it up, you got to save it, buddy, he is going to be able to spot this and uh, push it back here with these Vikings, there is enough energy for Cloak, oh, Widow Mine, not able to kill one off though, Naranor has not rebuilt his base because screw it, am I right now that is going to reveal the vision to ghosts so you can see he knows about all these buildings here they have been revealed the banshees though got to be very susceptible to the vikings got to keep the vikings alive still double the supply right now for ghosts but he has allowed his opponent to make a couple units here but all it is is just a handful of banshees i don't know if you oh the orbital command is so low on hp you got to repair it with your 40 minerals here, man. You got to try, but for right now, he's going to try and go ahead and attack right now. There's a huge amount of units going to swell in. They're super low on HP. These are the Skittle Terran, man. Actually, you know what? I'm going to call this the Fire Terran. He's got orange and red Marines, and that is it. Does not have a single full health Marine. There's going to be the Cloaking to start shooting up these Marines. The big scan comes down. Can he kill off all the Banshees? He does get one of them, and a second one goes down. The other two Banshees do remain. And it does look like these buildings will get taken out of here for Ghost, but can he actually kill off every single building? This is all the buildings that remain. There's only a couple left, but the Marines so low on HP. The Banshees, they cloak at the very last second. They still somehow have enough energy to go ahead and do this, and they are going to clean up the Marines. Every single Marine going to get taken out of here. The other Marine is dangerously low. He goes down as well. Oh, God, it does look like the Orbital Command will remain for now. This SCV, though, he's got to start mining. He's got to summon some mules or do something. It's currently 8 supply to 14, and it looks like a lot of that supply is in the Vikings. Where are these two siege tanks at? Oh, my God, he forgot about his tanks at the bottom right side. The Vikings over here uh, trying to win this game for him, but in typical Bronze League hero fashion, I think that units are going to be forgotten about down in the bottom right side. We'll see if he actually ends up bringing those back. There he goes. He finally remembers, oh, these units are actually pretty good. Should probably go ahead and use these considering they're half my army supply. The Vikings right now, oh, they could get some shots off on the Banshee. There's the cloak, though, once again forcing it. The big scan. Can he take it out? One Viking's got to go down as the low HP Viking gets taken out. Ah, the other Banshee barely escapes. Is there enough energy for a scan? No, he needed to use the mule to mine minerals to repair his command center. He can't actually kill off this Banshee if it gets enough energy. However, the Viking over here could very easily do the job. The two siege tanks got to be moving up right here. We have zero supply, or excuse me, zero minerals here for Ghost. He needs to continue mining with these SCVs. He has another SCV over here, which is just hanging out. The Widow Mine needs to be moved forward as well, but the siege tanks going to get taken out by the Banshee. Where's the Viking at? I think he lost the Viking as well. Oh, God, I look away for one second. What have you done? Oh, my God, he just left the game. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Eight, eight supply to four supply right now. The siege tank gets taken out. But I want to see here. Let's take a look at the supplies right now. We have one Widow Mine, 
Two SCVs for Ghost. I think he still could have saved this command circuit. He had 15 HP. Or excuse me, 15 minerals could have. I, I don't know the math on this. If you, if one SCV is mining and one re is repairing, do you have enough money to actually save this orbital command? I am not sure. He's got 54 HP on that orbital command. Now he may be saying, but Husky, you know, this army would just move forward and finish the job. Keep in mind, the Widow Mine though probably would have killed the Banshee off and might have scared the Marines just long enough for him to begin rebuilding, but I I just, I don't know, I'm so speechless. What is it with Bronze League heroes and these ridiculous, uh, I, you can't even call it base races. This game was just a hilarious showmanship of epic fail across the board. Now, I want to show you the supply difference that we had here for a little bit, 13 to 40. I think it was even more than that a little bit earlier, wasn't it? Maybe I'm mistaken, but... Uh, he had, like, triple the supply. There we go. 9 to 40 supply. 9 supply to 40. Oh, down to 8. Any other units going to get taken out here? I think that was the biggest supply discrepancy this entire game. 8 supply to 40. And I got to say, man, I got I to have to applaud. Literally going to be applauding here by clapping my hands because that's the only way that you can really applaud. I have to applaud Marinor's efforts. He tried to make the, the Thor drop work. When that didn't work, he tried it again with the second Thor. When that didn't work, he fell back, went into the I'm going to lose my base build. And then after that, did something so unorthodox where he does not build a command center. He is no longer worried about money because he's got his trust fund saved up. He instead just decides to uh, buy a bunch of units off of his few production buildings, and it ends up working out. Naranor, always, always strong to the end. So anyways, this has been yet another ridiculous uh, Bronze League Heroes. If you guys like the video, definitely just give it a thumbs up or something. I don't know. Do whatever you want. It's a free country. Well, I, I guess you guys live in different countries. But hey, you probably live in a free-ish country anyways. It's at least like 40% free, so you can do whatever you want. Anyways, hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys next time. Hello, and this is HGS Cask here, and it is time for another Bronze League Heroes. I made all the way through that without a voice crack, man. I have officially passed puberty, at least for now. I feel like some people never actually finish puberty, and I, I, I'm, I am unfortunately one of those people. We are just going to have to live with it. Anyways, up in the top right side, give it up for RNG Laz. Clap, 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 clap. And down in the bottom left side, it is the one. It is the only. It is the one and only Iglarier Wig. That one's a little bit harder to say than Laz, but whatever. Whatever. Anyways, this is going to be a ZBZ here on uh, the very tiny, tiny map, Planet S. I think that's the name. I honestly always forget this map's name for some reason. And it's like one of those sayings where it's like, Husky, you're a professional shoutcaster. You play a lot of StarCraft. You do a lot of live events. You should probably know the name of every map. And while that is true, and I do do relatively well in that regard, for some reason, this map, I'm always like, all right, I'm going to cast this game. Go ahead and load it up. Oh, God, this map. I forgot its name. It's kind of like that one teacher in high school who's like, okay, they aren't really bad. They aren't really good. So they don't kind of remember. Uh, you don't really remember them once you leave the class. And you always go in there and you're like, what the hell is this teacher's name? I can't remember. Planet S, if, that's, if that is your real name, is that map for me? I know that's a little bit off topic. But it is going to be a ZBZ, and uh, it is my honor, nay, my privilege to bring you this ZBZ here today. And apparently we got some drone on drone action over here. The best kind of action, am I right? <laughs> it does look like the drone gonna be scared away, but he has spotted everything. Gonna be having the spawning pool on right there. I also love this delayed Overlord Scout from last. He's just like, meh, it's Bronze League. I mean, I don't, I'm not gonna know what, is, what he's doing anyways. If I scout it, I'm not gonna know how to react, so. I'll get to him when I get to it. He does go have a, uh, for a spawning pool first here. He's got the extractor on the way as well. We'll see if he can extract some information from this Vespian guys. Okay, I, for some reason, I'm feeling a little giddy right now. I'm actually casting this at, let's see what time it is. It is 1.31 a.m., so I'm sure my neighbors love me, although I will say, my neighbors have these two dogs, which are effing adorable, but they do bark a lot. They do howl a lot, so if they ever complain about me making noise, I'll be like, yo, bro. I don't know if you know this, but I love your dogs. I mean, uh, your dogs are really loud, okay? I definitely don't find it cute, and I'm annoying. I'm going to complain to you. Uh, 
I'm so bad at being convincing is the problem, though. So anyways, we do have a similar-ish build here for both players. We have 17 drones, the 16 drones. Uh, queens are on the way at similar-ish timings. The reason I say similar-ish when at a pro level, this would be, like, completely drastically different builds. I say similar-ish because it is Bronze League Heroes. So as long as they're both making units and they're both making queens, it's kind of like, yeah, they're going the same build. They're, they're getting the exact same things, regardless. Um, but it does look like right now, double extractor for Laz. I never like this off of one base. I'm just saying, guys, double extractor, six of your drones there. I mean, that's like a, a, a half. No, it's 30%. I'm really good at math, I, I swear. That's like 30% of your mining drones, just busy mining gas. Which really for Zerg is super hard to spend this early. We'll see. We will see if Laz has a superhuman build, though, plan that's going to make me look like a total fool. As he does have 140 gas right now. That's going to continue to skyrocket. I would assume he's going to start metabolic boost. That is quite the upgrade these days, I hear. Right now, we are going to be having a Baneling, bu uh, Baneling Nest. I almost said a Baneling Bus. This is not a Baneling Bus. This is indeed a Baneling Nest. Going to be going down for Iglarior Wig. Is also going to be killing off this Overlord here. Oh, wait, he died already. I gotta stop making that noise because now he's dead. And, you know, they will they will say the good old Overlord, uh, an, an ode to an Overlord is what they say always. Uh, it's a very famous speech. You guys are most likely familiar with it. They say it at all Overlord funerals just to kind of really remember the Overlord. For the most important thing about overlords, which is their voice. Uh, you guys are familiar with this in Ode to an Overlord, but I'll go ahead and uh, recite it right now. So uh, bow your heads in uh, in Overlord prayer and uh, say it along with me. Uh brings a tear to my eye every single time. But regardless, we have to focus. We cannot weep over Overlord's Lost because that is something that happens a lot. We just got to get used to it. But right now, we have several Zerglings here for both players. Ah, Banelings on the way. Who would have thought with the Baneling nest and all? Now, three Banelings and three Lings. That's not really enough here to do anything to Laz, I feel like, especially with the Queen right here. Banelings are going to be rolling in there. Oh! All right, I think he manually detonated those. Didn't really get any good connections there. But he did kill a creep tumor, I feel like. I don't know. I mean, did he? Can, can Baneleaks kill creep tumors? I think they can. I this, Look, look, guys. This is something that you do not test very often, all right, is killing creep tumors with Baneleaks, okay? I think you can do it because Baneleaks can kill everything else. We're going to go with yes. I will say a confident yes. That is what happened there is he killed that creep tumor with those Baneleaks. More Banelings now to be on the way. They are morphing in. He likes to do these in threes, man. Threes company right here. And unfortunately for Laz, I have a feeling he doesn't have the best micromanagement in the world. Can, I'm currently rocking about zero APM there. I think he's down in the, the individual amounts of APM right now. But he does have Roaches here, which will help out a great deal versus any sort of Banelings. And I feel like Laz has no idea what's about to hit him, which is going to be a lot of Zerglings and a lot of Banelings. Here come the Zerglings right now. It does look like they will get surrounded on the Roaches here. Banelings have to be rolling in. Does manage to detonate one of the Banelings on the Roaches. Banelings trying to figure out where the hell they want to go. Unable to get major connections here. Oh, but he could get a good one right there. And he does manage to all of a sudden. That's going to open up the floodgates. Three going to be running in here. Able to take out the queen. Uh, the other queen, I think, went down a little bit earlier. A couple of drones here just kind of hanging out. They are just in post-traumatic stress disorder. Except it's not. It's shell shock. That's what we're going to say. Shell shock right now. Is that drone's like, oh, God, save me. Jesus, take the wheel. He does decide to turn into a spine crawler, and that apparently ended up working out. It does look like all these drones are going to get taken out. Now, you do have to remember that Laz already has his mansion up and running. So, whoa, we got the ninja roaches here spawning. Remember, when roaches attack within melee range, it still counts as a ranged attack, but it has a melee animation, which is actually kind of cool there. So those ninja roaches spawn with their Shuriukens, man, or Katanas or something. Just going to be hitting those guys in the face. More Banelings are going to be in the way. This time, opting to go for four. A lot of minerals actually in the bank here for Eglarior Weg. So we'll see if he does anything else here, like make some more Banelings or throw down more expansions, maybe some tech, something like that. He does have more Zerglings selected. All right, two more Banelings on the way. He does have enough gas for a lot more of this, though. Remember that Banelings don't take supply, because you've already paid for the supply within the Zerglings. So he's got plenty of room to start making these Banelings. There he goes right there. You can see morphing them in, even though he's supply blocked like a boss. Obviously, that was part of his plan, was to lose the Overlord, get supply blocked, just make Banelings instead. 
because you really can't make anything else at that point. We did have two Overlords on the way. Banelings continuing to be produced right now, but for now, it looks like Eglaria Wegg finally getting his queen here at the 11 minute mark for that expansion. So that's going to be quite good. Ah, Spire going to be on the way. He's aspiring for greater things. It doesn't get the bait. Oh! <laughs> Victor, what are you trying to do to me by picking these games? All right, well, that I think we've all been there where you're rolling in your banelings, you got enough to kill everything, and you do that, you hit the X button. Oh my god, that poor, poor soul. Units lost 2300. Now, what's funny is that the units killed uh, resources tab, if it existed, uh, would not show 2300 for Laz. Laz did like maybe 1800 damage with his units there and then he just let the rest of it the the rest of the 500 resources lost he he let Iglaria Wegg sacrifice those himself oh my god I think he's actually gonna just lose this game at this point uh wow that is actually pretty hilarious we'll see if he can actually make a comeback here but that took me by complete surprise now a lot of times when I watch these you know bronze league heroes I'm always expecting kind of like a big epic battle or I'm expecting someone to right click like 200 marines incorrectly but when you're running in with your entire baneling army and you accidentally hit the X key which for those of you who do not know manually detonates your banelings that is not something that I would expect. Uh, then again, in Bronze League Heroes, you basically just expect the unexpected, because really there's nothing that can be expected other than hilarity. Now, we do have the Mutalist going to be moving out, and I feel like those Mutalists did get spotted by those roaches, and indeed they did. They're going to go ahead and throw down the Spore Crawlers. Now, remember that Spore Crawlers are actually completely broken uh, against Mutalists. They do so much damage. They are definitely the counter to Mutas, and I feel like, yeah, those Mutas are going to have to head back home, and I, I think that that might actually be it. I mean, that that's kind of what happens when you accidentally manually detonate your Banelings. So that X button, man, you know, that X button is about as useful as Xbox One. Boom! Roasted. Boom! Comedy, uh, whatever. We do have a lot of units going to get taken out. I mean, there's really no way that that Iglaria Way can win at this point. Again, then again, I have seen weirder things happen in Bronze League Heroes, but I can confidently say that these mutas are not going to kill it off. And Iglaria Wegg is going to say, "GG." The Broodlings trying to help out, but there is just no way. Laz throwing out the GG and a smiley face. You know, let's just go back to that magic moment. Let's go back to that magic moment where we realized. I should actually play more StarCraft because at least that doesn't happen to me. Uh, here we go. Well, watch it in slow motion. This is the part where I almost died. And I do want to give a special shout-out to my friend Sinvicta. He is the one who sorts through hundreds, if not thousands, of Bronze League Hero replays. All right, here we go. The main league draw. <laughs> I got to watch it again. Hang on. We, I wish I could watch it in even slower motion replay. If I was if I was mad, this is where I'd be like, now the point of the offense is going to be to get into that Zerg player's base, and he's going to want to do as much damage as possible here. Because really in StarCraft, you want to try to kill units without losing your own units, okay? So here you can see he's going to be setting up the offense with the Banelings. He doesn't have any defense, but you know what they say, a good offense is a good offense. So he's going to go in here, he's going to run the Banelings in. Now if we, if we zoom in on the cheerleader, butts here you can see that they're ready to go they're cheering on and here comes the banelings right now now the watch here closely and you can just barely see where he messes up all right that is not what john madden sounds like at all i, I think i've actually offended anyone who watches football but uh, anyways that is gonna be it uh good game laz i think that that uh, you earned that through your great decision making in micro so well played uh iglaria we wegg played a perfect game so I will, I will hand it to him. A perfect game, good sir. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.